hello guys welcome back to the channel and today we are going to build coffee shop app using react native so here is our application so first of all i will walk you through the screens and what we are going to build so this is the figma file figma layout of the app and the first one is this home screen as you can see here this is app and this is the design so first it will have this home screen which will have these coffee and coffee beans list and then after clicking on them uh, you'll go to this uh, detail screen so bean detail screen or coffee detail screen any one of them okay then here this screen have uh, two functionalities the first one is this add to favorite and the second one is add to cart when you click on add to cart here you will go to this card screen so this is our card screen and this is how it will look like and here you can customize the number of quantities and number with respect to their sizes like small medium large and also with the gram so this is our card screen then if you want to pay uh, then if you click on this pay button you will go to this payment screen where you can select any but any one of these so i'll select credit card apple pay whatever and then this is our favorite screen so uh, remember uh, here you can add to favorite an item so that item will be added to the favorite list so here is our favorite list and here again if you pay from uh, any one of these method that cart item will be added to the order history so this one is order history screen so there are total six screens the first one is this home screen then the second one is this cart screen third one is this favorite screen uh, fourth one is this order history screen and the remaining two are the detail screens and the payment screen so this is our figma layout of the app and here are the icons i used and this is our app logo so yeah we are going to add app logo as well so yeah this is our app you can see here and if you click on this uh, small plus button also that will also add that item to to the cart okay and and this is the empty cart item so if the cart is empty it will look like this Simil uh, similarly for favorites and order history as well so yeah first uh, let and then let's see what is detail so this is the detail screen here you can expand the description by clicking on it and then again again you can just go to any other and it's, it's same so yeah here you can add an item to the favorites so i have added this coffee black coffee and you can also add the beans as well so yeah i have added the beans so okay so now our cart is empty we can add some items so first of all we can add items from the home screen home screen as well so you you can see here but also if you go inside that you can select item so small so here you can see the small item is added here one kg is added so i'll add another one which is 500 grams okay so this is our uh, a cart list we can manipulate it and you can also go from here also so yeah here you can add small and one more thing if you add a same quantity a same size it will increase its quantity so i again added small so it's it become quant uh, two quantity now i'll add medium like that so this is there are two layouts so the first one is this three uh, if there are multiple sizes then this layout will be used and if there is single size then this lay layout will be used so that's how it is and here also if you see here there is this price so if you click on it the total price of the cart is calculated based on the item so here is the here are two items and there are respective not respective the total price so yeah you can pay here now you can choose the payment method so google pay apple pay and based on that it will change the text here pay pay with wallet pay with google pay right like that so one more thing the payment method is not act uh, an accurate actual method it's just a 
gimmick model so it is not accurate actual so yeah now you can select any one of these method click on it and this is a nice animation of payment successful and then order history is added to this uh, there the cart item is added to the order history so this is our order history okay so again you can navigate to that item from here also you can see which item is that and the download button so there is also a download animation like this one so yeah but it doesn't download in real the but you can also make it for yourself like it will calculate the order history and make it a pdf you can add that if you wish and last this is the favorite screen so yes we have added the item to the favorite screen and if you want to remove that item you can just unlike from here and you will see the item list so this is our item list yeah okay so that's it that's our app uh, some more things are these uh, categories so you can navigate the navigate to the categories so black coffee cappuccino espresso latte and macchiato so these are the categories you and if you want to search then just type uh, type the search keyword and then click on this search icon it will show that item so these these are the items but if if you uh, if you write any wrong item there then it will show no coffee available so yeah you can exit it by clicking on cross that's it so yeah this is the last functionality of the home screen apart from that everything is handled using state management and uh, and everything is persisted so even let's just say our cart is empty i have added an item to the cart and then let's uh, then now i will close my app okay so you may think the data has is lost but uh, it's not because we are using state management and we are pers persisting data so if you go to the cart screen that item is still here and also the order history screen so again i will remove this one i don't want this one so i will add another one like this i'll pay with a nice animation and again this is our new order history so new item is added at the top of the list and these are the old item and again if you wish you can download the entire order history and that new order history will also be saved even after closing the app so yeah this is a coffee house app so if you like my work then you can support me through buy me a coffee patreon github sponsor or even youtube thanks and if you want to follow me for more such projects you can follow me on twitter you can follow me on github you can follow me on instagram these are the handles so yeah so now we will start building this app and uh also we are going to add, add these two uh things uh the first one is the app icon this app uh, name and this splash screen so if you can see this is the our splash screen we are also going to add that okay and the most important thing is uh we are, we, we are going to build this project using bare react native cli and not expo because most of the industry standards are about react native cli most of the companies use react native cli uh, not expo I, I mean i didn't heard about expo that much so that's why we are going to build our app using react native cli okay so now first of all i will uninstall this app and we are going to build this entirely from scratch but before that we have to make some setups for our uh, to get started with the application so first of all uh this is the github repo if you if you want to follow me you can follow me here on github and this is the repo you can star mark this repo okay and now let's get started with the building of our application first we have to start the project so 
go to your react native workspace where you wish to uh, start the project so go there launch the command prompt and then type npx react native init coffee shop app so with this command you can create a starter project empty project of react native so yeah this is our project hit enter uh, it will download the template and uh, it will install all the dependencies required so wait for some time till it's uh, till the new project is being created until it's uh, getting started i will walk you through all the dependencies of the project so the first one is okay so there are total three dependencies the first one is this react navigation the second one are uh, elemental dependencies like blur view gradient uh, vector icons uh, those lottie animations everything so the, those are elemental dependencies and the last one is our state management dependency which is this just stand right this one so these three types of dependencies are there first of all this react navigation so here we we going to need two navigation methods the first one is stack navigation so uh, that one is important and another one is bottom tabs navigation so if you go into the na navigator here you you will see native stack and st stack actually native stack is for uh, is more efficient actually it uses the native api of android and ios so that uh, it it will be more uh, optimized and more fast so that's why we are going to need native stack and the another one is bottom tabs so these uh, four are dependencies and another one is these basic dependencies of react navigation so react native niche react navigation native and these two also but for expo so we will install this one two to three more dependencies which are resistant emmer and async storage this one so first of all what is just stand so just stand is basically a state management library and what it does is it provides a global storage for the app so uh, any screen access that storage it will have consistent data across the application let's just say our cart so our cart item will be accessible to any screen and when we change the uh, items of the cart item if we add or remove any item it will reflect to the entire app so entire app will be updated to the latest uh, data the current data of the store so that's why we're going to use this uh, the stand it is very lightweight library uh, lightweight and fast and very easy to use uh, if you see the documentation it is hook based so that's why it is very easy to use the second one is this emmer library so this library helps to update the deeply nested data objects of any data of of a store so what happens when we update a store when we update store the deeply nested objects don't get up updated right away from there so that's why we have to use this emmer plugin or you can say emmer library which helps to update the store at valid at a very deeply nested uh, to very deeply nested objects that that's right so if you can go to the documentation then uh, here you can see here these are like uh, this done method these are deeply nested um, objects and in our project we are going to go more deeper so that's why we going to need these library to update the store at very deep level another one is this react native async storage so this uh, this library helps us to store the data locally on the device and you saw that i added an item to the cart and then removed the app from the uh, ram so even though after that our data was still there the cart items are still there and the order history was also there so it is only because of this react native async storage 
this helps us to uh, store the data locally on the device and that same data can be used by store to update the store items so these three are the state management dependencies this is the react navigation so the, these are navigational dependencies and other are basic dependencies like react native linear gradient then react native community blur react native vector icons and then lotty react native to add the animations okay so wait for some time let's see yeah our project is already completed so close the terminal here and this is our project workspace this is the root level of our project so open the project in the vs code okay now we have to add a little uh, modification to the android code because we are actually operating our app in a portrait mode so that's why we have to do that so go to the android app src main and then android dot android manifest this xml file here you have to add a property which is android screen orientation equals portrait so this property will help to put our app in a portrait mode only and it will not rotate based on the rotation of our uh, smartphone or anything so yeah we have to add this property then close this one and now we are going to install all the dependencies so first of all open the terminal here so first we will start with the react navigation so first first install this one copy this install this so this is react navigation native another one is this npm install react native screens and react native safe area context so these two are also required and don't install this one because this is expo this is for expo and we are using bare react native project not expo so this one okay so again install this one these two are native dependencies so that's why we 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 need that and another one is we are going uh, only for android so that's why we have to update the main activity class so this is our class you can find this package here so we have to add this code actually so copy the code from here go to android app src main java and here you will find main activity dot java so this is our main activity go here and add this line that way it will not crash and one more thing add this import statement so copy this one and make sure to add following import statement at the top of the file below your package statement so below your package statement so here you can just add it just below the package statement but all of the uh, these these are the dependencies so at the top of that that way it is okay so now next uh, go to the navigators native stack here close this one okay and here you will find these native stack library so we are using stack navigation and remember not to use the stack navigation only use native stack navigation so yeah so just copy the dependency here go inside and install the dependency so native stack is done now we have to install bottom tabs so this is our bottom tabs and this is our bottom tabs will look like so again install this one so our navigational dependencies are completed now we will move to the elemental dependencies which are these these ones so again go to that 
install react native linear gradient then react native community blur so linear gradient is used actually to if you can see the documentation here so these are the linear gradients and there are linear gradients in our figma file that's why okay then this one is co community blur so this package will help us to add this blur effect to our app so again copy the command and install the community blur another one is this lottie react native so again just copy that to install and then paste here and the last one is this react native vector icons so actually we have to copy this here and remember to modify our command to this one so remember to add save dev add types before react native vector icons uh, slash including slash so this is because we are using typescript so that's why we're gonna need the types and wanted to save it as a dependency development dependency so again save dev add the red types react native vector icons so this is done now our elemental dependencies are uh, completed as well now the last three are these npm install the stand so install the just stand then this immer so install it as well and the last one is this react native async storage so we have published eight days ago so so it is the right one okay so these are our dependencies which are completed So we have installed all the dependencies of the project. Now we are going to build our project or you can say start the project in the emulator. So this is our emulator. Uh, actually we have created the project but not started. So yeah, so go to in first go inside the Android folder. Oh, sorry, my bad. And then clean the project. So before installing any dependencies and after installing any dependencies just clean the project and then restart it because that way the new apk file or the new project will have the new dependencies you are using inside the project so let's just say here is our app file here we are using these dependencies so it will add those dependent de dependencies sometimes it doesn't add those those dependencies that's why we are have we have to clean the old build and then rebuild the project from scratch so first clean the dependencies it will take some seconds maybe 10 seconds 10 20 seconds so wait for some time to initialize and complete the uh, clean build the build is clean now you can go back to the project so this is our root level or you can just create a new terminal from here go to terminal and create new terminal now here we have to start the project so use this npm npx react native run android with this command it will start from scratch it will build all the fi bundle files for android and remember to uh, keep open this node terminal okay so the main problem was this android screen orientation i have added this colon so remove this colon that's why it was causing it to shut down so again start the project okay so our app is starting now and this is our empty project so this is how it looks uh, looks like yeah you can see here okay so again remember to change the property here i mistakenly added colon also 
so remove that and try to build again now after that close everything and again we have to remove the build because uh we have to add more steps so we need to add assets so go inside the go inside android folder and clean uh, and remove the old build okay so now it's completed now here is our coffee shop app root project so actually first of all if you go to my github this is the github page of the app and inside the src folder there is this assets folder which have these images then there is this lottie folder which has these animations and another one is this selection.json file so these three assets are required uh, these three files are required there so i have already uh, collected all those three so assets folder lottie folder and this selection.json file so what are they so these app images are basically these uh, payment assets then if you see here coffee coffee square all these assets coffee assets and the last one is this font so this is poppins font and this one is this app icon so all all of these are actually important because uh, the, this one will have all the uh, svg icons custom svg icons and if you want to know how to uh, use custom svg icons in react native i'm going to upload a tutorial you, you can find it on my channel and the last one is this selection.json file so this file uh, this file is also required so this one so we will close it for now and this one so these two files are required for svg icons to work so yeah so inside your root project here you can see here create a src folder here so src folder here okay this is our src folder and inside that we have to paste uh, the assets folder so copy the folder here go to the src folder again and inside that paste the assets folder now if you go to the github you can see lottie folder as well so again go to the file here copy the lottie folder and paste it inside the assets folder okay so those three are completed now the last one is this selection.json file so copy that and paste it inside the root location of the project not inside the src you can but you have to change the part so that's why i'm pasting it right here okay so these two are done now okay so check the vs code and see if those folders are replicated everything is fine yeah it's fine so now here we have to create a file at the root location and not inside src folder so here create a new file as react native dot config dot js so this file will help to append the assets from our assets folder inside ios and android folder so here we have to add a uh, two three lines of code which is this module dot export and then we have to add the projects inside an ios and then android and from where so we have to men mention the asset location so this is like seven lines of code we have to export the assets which is from here src assets so in, inside I, uh, ios and android folder so this config is required for our next command so again open a new terminal here and our command is npx react native asset so this is our command and 
इट्स एसेट नॉट एसेट ओनली एसेट सो एन पी एक्स रिएक्टिव एसेट हिट द कमांड वॉट इट विल डू इट विल कॉपी ऑल द एसेट्स फाइल सो बोथ जे पी जी फाइल्स एंड टी टी एफ फाइल्स बोथ इमेज एसेट्स एंड पॉन्ट एसेट्स ओके सो एक्चुअली वी मिस्टेकनली डिन एड दिस एस दैट्स वाई सो अगेन दिस इज द कोड हियर एंड नाउ यू कैन जस्ट हिट दैट कमांड अगेन एंड या नाउ यू कैन सी लिंकिंग टी टी एफ एसेट्स टू आई ओ एस लिंकिंग कस्टम एसेट्स टू आई ओ एस एंड देन अगेन टी टी एफ टू एंड्रॉयड एंड पी एन जी एसेट्स टू एंड्रॉयड सो दीज टू एसेट्स आर गोइंग टू लिंक इन साइड आई ओ एस एंड एंड्रॉयड फोल्डर सो या अगेन आई मिस द एस हियर सो रिमेंबर टू एड दैट एंड डोंट फॉरवर्ड द वीडियो बिकॉज यू मे मिस अ कन्फिग्रेशन सो कीप वॉचिंग द वीडियो यू कैन स्पीड अप बट डोंट स्कीप द कंटेंट नाउ और एसेट्स आर लिंक्ड नाउ वी कैन अगेन क्रिएट द बिल्ड बट बिफोर दैट वी हैव टू एड सम मोर फाइल्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन साइड द एस आर सी फोल्डर क्रिएट अ न्यू फोल्डर एज डेटा ओनली डेटा एंड अगेन इन साइड द एस आर सी फोल्डर क्रिएट अ न्यू फोल्डर एज थीम ओके सो एसेट्स डेटा लॉटी थीम सो इन साइड डेटा फोल्डर वी हैव टू एड टू फाइल्स बेसिकली सो दीज टू आर द फाइल्स दीज टू फाइल कंटेन्स डेटा फॉर आवर ऐप सो इट्स जस्ट एन एरे ओके सो द नेम ऑफ द फाइल इज कॉफी डेटा डॉट टी एस फॉर टाई स्क्रिप्ट कॉपी एंटायर डेटा एंड देन इन साइड द डेटा फोल्डर क्रिएट अ न्यू फाइल एज कॉफी डेटा डॉट टी एस एंड पेस्ट इट राइट हियर सो दिस इज द कॉफी डेटा एंड हियर यू कैन सी ऑल द डिटेल सो आई डी नेम दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन रोस्टेड लेवल दीज आर द इमेज लिंक्स इनग्रीडियंट स्पेशल इनग्रीडियंट प्राइजेस एवरेज रेटिंग रेटिंग काउंट फेवरेट फॉल्स फेवरेट type coffee and index like that so this is the index of the array and here you can see we have this required statement so these are actually linked to these assets so these are the path and actually react native cannot uh, locate the assets dynamically because it uh, because it affects while bundling that's why we have to import the assets like this or you can else use the Uh, links actually HTTP but it requires net uh, internet and this one doesn't require any internet so yeah these are like this so they are linked in such manner like square portrait again square portrait like that so this is our coffee data now we gonna add a beans data. and here again in the data folder. go in the coffee beans and copy these four items okay so yeah these are also exactly same the content of the data is changed that's that's it the images the names all those things but both are actually same and this will help us to uh, build the app more efficiently okay so our data part is also done now the theme part actually so this is the theme.ts we have to create a file in the theme.ts in the themes folder as theme.ts and these are the themes of our app so these themes are used because uh, so that we can build our app very fast and actually these are uh, this is uh, the setup of the application so preparing the data preparing the theme uh, theme uh, values again preparing the assets from lottie and assets folder so we are basically setting up our uh, react native projects to get started 
so yeah this is the interface you can see here we have declared the space types with and then their values again same with uh, color values color values and color types same for font family font value font family values font size border radius everything so actually you can write this or you can just copy it but it's very uh, rework again and again so that's why we are copy pasting it so we are completed with our assets folder data animations and theme now we have uh, now we are going to add our folder structure so so now we will add our components folder inside the src folders then two more folders so the first one is this screens folder and another one is this navigators and the last one is this store folder so uh, not file actually folder So this store folder is for state management library. We will host our store here inside the store folder. And yeah, this is our folder structure for our app. So these all things are uh, added. Okay, so now we can run our app again, but first of all, close the node server. And technically it will not change anything on the screen, but we do need to have working. So again, launch the terminal. We already clean build it. So clean, we already cleaned the previous build. So you can start with npx react native run Android. It will start a new server and it will create all the new assets, everything inside the new build. Okay, so bundling of our application is completed and you can see on screen nothing is changed. But now again, we have to go inside this components folder. It is actually important for now. And create a custom custom icon.ts. This will help to import the assets from our uh, selection.json file and app icon file. So we, you can create icon set from Ico Moon. Yeah, remove this one and import it from React Native vector icons. Actually, yeah, I mistakenly. You can just create icon set from icon yeah this method now from here we have to add another which is icon config so import icon config from we have this file as selection.json file again which is located here right so we have this ico moon config and now we have to import export our icon so export default create icon set from ico moon and we have to mention our config file that's it so these three lines are required to use the custom assets uh, not custom assets actually custom icons so yeah components folder we have created the custom icon and this is our emulator and you can add anything here so just below that i'm going to add custom icon here and if you save it wait for some time it will reflect the changes on the app itself okay so remember we have installed our module here actually but it seems to not uh, it doesn't have installed so again open the terminal 
just type react native vector icons and mistakenly we only installed the types but didn't uh, but we haven't installed the library so again npm install react native vector icons okay so yeah remove this one and yeah now you can see the search icon so we dynamically added this library so i told you sometimes it work and sometimes it doesn't so this is our search icon here and you can also change that icon to something else like 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 this one yeah now you, now you can check custom icons are working so yes now the next step is to create the navigator so basically if you here is our figma file these are the bottom tab navigation so we have to create this one this one so it should look like this so it requires these icons this bottom tab uh, library and this blur view so three uh, three libraries are required okay so now we will remove everything inside the app.tsx select everything here press it uh, remove it and then so yeah this is a shortcut method to create this uh, entry level code or you can say template code for our app so when i when you do this and save it it will only have this app value just like that okay first of all we have to create a screen so we we're gonna have total six screens so for that inside the screen folder create a new file as card screen or you can say home screen dot tsx then react native functional export and these snippets are used with the help of extension as react native snippet so i have installed this ex extension both these extension that will help me to build these template code very fast so yeah uh, you can also do that so the next screen is card screen then again react native functional export that's it yeah remember to bring down the default export default okay now the next one is this favorite screen okay so this one is actually tsx that's why it was showing the error thank you typescript and bring down the export default again new file as order history screen now detail screen and the last one is this payment screen okay so all of our six screens are completed so the template code is completed not actual screens and just add home screen here detail screen and payment screen so actually we are going to have these three screens inside the stack navigator and the remaining four screens which will be the tabs that will be inside the tab navigator and that tab navigator will be added to the 
stack navigator at top so i will show you what i am talking about so here we have to create a method which is first we have to import navigation container from react nav navigation native and again import create native stack navigator these two methods are very important so yeah and now create a stack variable create native stack navigator here yeah that's it and inside the navigation can here inside the return method remove everything and wrap it inside the navigation container and it should have some more uh, so the first one is this stack navigator actually stack dot navigator and again inside that we gonna need stack dot screen okay and it requires some props so again you can name it as details and then component will be detail screen and some options which will be okay so this is our detail screen actually and the home screen will not be available here i'm going to remove it here actually and style sheet yeah actually style sheet is also not required so we are good to go now again you can just copy this one and replace the details with other so okay so our stack navigator is completed but uh, you cannot see how it is working but for now we're gonna keep uh, keep it as it is and again we have to add a screen options here and set the header header shown to false because we don't need these details like that header okay so yeah this is completed now the next step is to create a navigator so inside the navigator create a new file as tab navigator so tab navigator dot tsx okay again react native functional export yeah you can save it right here and we don't need this one basically so remove this one as well set it to top okay now we have to create our tabs right here but how we are going to create that so first just have this old code and then here inside that import the tab navigator and just duplicate it rename it to tab tab navigator you can save it and if you reload the app you, you can press r tab navigator must be yeah so tab navigator is visible here and the tab navigator is not actually a screen so it should not display it like that but inside this it will have four screens which is home screen uh, home screen card screen favorite screen and order history screen so these four screens are there and we do need them so first just import them home screen card screen okay so it's down there then import favorite screen and then import order history screen okay so these four screens are completed 
we also need to use the custom icon so custom icon is also added then remove this one we don't need that some more dependencies are there so all the screens are there now we have to create our bottom tab so for that we need bottom tab navigator here this import is also important and then create a tab from create bottom tab navigator and in the tab navigator we have to import our tab navigator tab dot navigator and inside that we have tab dot screen this method and this will have basic requirement like name which will be home and the component will be our home screen that's it okay so now you can see here a single tab and these tab bar we're gonna change all those but for now so we're gonna need these four tabs and all of them will have different names second one is card screen third one is favorite screen and the last one is history okay so now you can see the four tab bars but all of them display the same home screen actually so we're gonna change the imp uh, the component so card screen here favorite screen here and order history screen here okay so home screen then card screen then favorite screen and then order history screen okay so this is our tab navigator and now we have to remove this history so in the navigator options you have screen options and there we and there we have to add this header shown false now it's gone okay again we can add tab hide so whenever we uh, click on any input the uh, or whenever keyboard is is being used the tab bar will be hidden so for that just add tab bar i don't keyboard so true set it to true okay so these are our options also we have to remove these home label cart everything for that we have to add tab bar show label and set it to false okay so yeah now our labels are also gone okay now our next thing is tab bar style actually so first of all we will have this tab bar style and this will have some properties as height which will be 80 position so we wanted to float it so that whatever the content under the tab bar it will be visible if we put it transparent the so position will be absolute here now background color so background color will be uh, here our colors folder colors dot primary black hex primary black rgba so if you go inside this color this is inside the theme folder actually so inside us not folder theme file here you will see these colors and these are the their names so if you want to access this red color you have to use this red similarly for orange whatever this configuration is okay so black rgba you can save that but still we haven't added anything that's why 
now border top weight will be zero elevation will be zero and border top color will be transparent because it has some default styles for the tab bar if you can see here so all of these will be removed okay so for that just add tab bar style here this is our property and set the tab bar style from here yeah now you can see here this is how it looks like okay so the single thing remaining is our background blur okay so wait for some time to okay we will uh, add that right away so to add that we have to add tab bar background and it accepts a function like an arrow function and here we need our blur view so it will have some overlay overlay color which will be set to empty because it is required and if you don't set it the, your entire app will look like it is under some background uh, so that's why you have to set the overlay color to nothing then you can also set it to transparent whatever you wish uh, before that we have to set the blur amount here actually so blur amount will be around 15 and now the style equals to styles dot blur view styles so it is showing that red dash because we haven't defined it and if we save it it may throw error okay here and it's just styles for blur view so absolute here top zero bottom zero left zero right zero okay so now it is you can see it as a little darker that's why okay so whatever you put under that screen it will blur it out so this is our uh, tab screen tab navigator actually and here our uh, background functionality is completed but we have to add our tab screen so we have to customize our tabs based on the focus and based on the state of the tab navigator so yeah here uh, we can add one more property as options and in that we can add tab bar icon so it has some properties or props you can say and we gonna use our custom icon here so the name is here home size will be 25 and color is actually if it is focused then the color will be orange but if it's not focused it will be light gray hex so this one yeah now you can see here if it is focused it will uh, turn it to orange else it will be gray so we need these option to every screen so just copy this one put it in every screen here save it and now you can see so now just change the icon so here cart here like and here it's bell so yeah change these icon name so and also you can see the screens are changing based on the active tab bar 
okay so tab navigator is completed and nothing is remaining here and remember to uh, remember to change this import statement with this hierarchy okay so our tab bar is completed now inside this app and our stack navigation has is already completed okay so now this is this is the figma layout so here you can see we are going to build the home screen then after that the detail screen okay then from here it acts uh, access two functionalities the favoriting any item liking any item and adding that item to the cart so these two functionalities so after this one we're gonna add we're gonna build favorite screen and then cart screen so these two screens and now here you can see we have two more screens which is payment screen and order history screen so in the cart screen when you click on pay button it will go to the payment screen and then it will go to the order history screen so that way we have to uh, first build the payment screen and then we have to build the order history screen so these are the functionalities actually so let's just focus on the home screen part So remove everything. We only need the home screen. Here it is. And before building the home screen, we're gonna need the data to display the list of the coffees. So for that, we have to use a store. So which is located here, and we have to create a store here. And then as we as we are going to build screens, we will add the functionalities. But for now, we are going to add data. So that way it will have the data and we can use it right inside our screen. So let's get started with building the store. So for that, create a new file as store.ts. Of course, it will be a TypeScript file. And here you will build a store. So first import create from the stand we because we need to create the store then we have to import produce method from immer because we need to update the store at very uh, update the store which are deeply nested deeply linked objects that's why so again we have to import persist method Now we have to import the async storage. Like that, okay. And here we again, we have to import the coffee data and beans data. Okay, so these are the basic imports to create the store. So this is to create the store. This is to update the store for deeply linked objects. This is to persist the store. Okay, and this is the storage we are going to use. And these are the data. Okay, so first export const use store so this there are two use stores so the first one is that we are creating using this const and the second one is the from the just stand we we don't need the uh, one which is coming from just stand we only have to use the use store inside our screens so create here and then persist this will be the function inside that it will have two more function as set and get methods and then it will have these okay so and it accepts two objects not two actually two values so name will be 
coffee app and another one is this storage type so storage will be create json storage this method and here we have to pass a thing storage okay and now we haven't defined our store here yet so for that we have to make coffee list from coffee data okay the bean actually it's bean list from beans data that's it and what does it saying and actually it's not using we are not using any of these function i think that that is why it is acting like that okay so we will create favorites list which will be an empty array similarly we have this cart list same an empty array and this one is order history screen order history is not screen it's order history list and the last one is this cart price which will be zero for now so okay so coffee list coffee bean list favorites list cart list order history list and the cart price all these are required to build or to use you can say to use the store but yeah we are using it like that so this is our storage we haven't used the produce method because it is used inside the functions which which will alter the state of the store so state of this coffee list bin list so we will use that when we have the functional part covered but for now we need the data part which is showing the list so if you see here this is our console you can restart it minimize the console here and inside that here we have to use the store but before using the store we have to import it so import use store i told you so one is from our store and the other one is from the stand so don't use from the one which is from the stand use it which we have built so use store from store and then here we can access the coffee list use store here you can date like any coffee list okay so this name can be anything else but i am just using it so it will a lot less confusing and here if you just do console log for coffee list yeah you can see the entire copy and you can just change the length not length actually you can just see the length so reload yeah you can see coffee list 18 so there are total 80 18 coffee items you can do this similar to the bean okay so this part is covered now we can just minimize it right here so just hide this one we don't need that we're gonna need coffee list then bean list and change here it as well bean list okay so if you see the design then after that we have to check the categories actually so we have to calculate what are the categories are so for that we got we, we are using use state so categories comma set categories use state from react 
and here we have to pass a function okay but for now i'm setting it as undefined and another we're gonna need one more state so search text okay and the last one is category index not last actually it's second last so yeah we have to keep track of the category so that's why we need this category index and this index will be an object which will have index as zero and category as categories of zero but we can set it as array yeah, now it will not okay so whenever the category index changes it will change the category index like that and so this is the name actually so whatever the name is we can set its index and the index number as well so we can set the name and its value and the last one is our sorted list so so the sorted sorted not list actually it's sorted coffee and it will also have a function undefined okay so now this is a data part we have both data then categories we have to uh, extract all the categories then this is the search text will be used inside the search input search method then this is called a category index so this will have which is the active index and what is the name of that category these two things another one is this called sorted coffee so whenever you click on any category you will see a new coffee list so that's why we need this sorted coffee okay so this is done now we will start building these two methods where we need to extract the categories and we have to set the sorted uh, coffees so the first method is get categories from data so we have this coffee list data with us so first we have to get the list of all categories in that data and here just declare the data uh, an empty array or object then using for loop and if temp okay so in this function we are just doing a simple thing which is we are creating an empty object temp and then here we are parsing through every uh, object of that array data length and in that we are checking if that name data of that index dot name that name does exist inside temp so if so if it doesn't exist which is equals to undefined then what we are doing is we are creating a, a property of that name and setting its value to one okay but uh, so if you uh, go to the data uh, data if you see the data we have this name americano and then again americano so to extract these data from that that's why we are setting their values as one 
and we are just counting whatever it is so yeah here now you can see we uh, we will have an object temp and this thing uh, what it does is it extracts all the properties from temp and make it into an array so if you see in the design our L our array will have all these uh, uh, strings which with their coffee name so it is doing that and then this method unships at this all category uh, at the start of the array so now we have our new array and you can see now we are returning our categories that's it so for this one we have to change our set categories and here we have to remove this empty array and call the function get categories from data and we have to pass coffee list as our data source so what it will do this function will get the coffee list and then it will get all the categories and append the all category as well and then return it so our this uh, state variable will have the list of uh, categories an array of categories so the next one is this sorted so again we're gonna make another function where const get coffee list that's it this is our function name and also we have to mention which category we want so so when we click on any uh, category it should display that category only so that's why this is our function and it will have this first of all we have to check if category is equals to all if it is then we have to just return the data first just copy the data or you can just return it right here else if the data if the category is some different then we can just use this one uh, filter method on the data and what it will have an item of type any and from there we have to compare the item name from the category we received uh, g o r y actually there was a spelling mistake and yeah that's it that's how we will filter the data and then return the coffee list this is our small function okay so where is our sorted coffee here so just pass the data first of all pass the category so here we have to pass category index dot category so it will have this active category index and the next one is this coffee list okay so this way both of our uh, sorted coffee and category list categories all are created now one more thing we forgot to add import statement to use height to actually use uh, use bottom tab bar height from react navigation bottom tabs so we we gonna need this one because we have to add that to the below of our view so yeah set that as well here okay so now it's done our uh, data part is almost completed okay so as per the design first we are going to create this header then this text and this search input field then this category list this is a sliding list then this this is the flat list this will be the flat list and there are total two types so yeah we are going to create both and that's it in the home screen so let's get started with this a uh, design of home screen so now we will create the 
design part so we we have to open this in a split screen and here you can see the tiles and here you can see the jsx so yeah remove this one and then here we have to add a style styles dot screen container and then again add these styles here with flex one and background color as colors dot primary black hex yeah now this is good and here we can change the status bar so again status bar from react native if you uh, you can cross check status bar here yeah right so here we can add property as background color colors dot primary black hex that's it our now it looks seamless okay so now the next task is to add the header so we have this but we need to add that header inside a scroll view because when we scroll our uh, screen header should be scrolling with that so add scroll view here and show vertical scroll indicator equals false right and another one is content container style so yeah this scroll view flex uh, so this will have only single property which is flex group okay so that any content inside uh, the scroll view if we set its uh, height as flex one it will take the entire screen so that way even if we don't have any content inside the scroll view it will take the entire space available for the screen now the next thing is to we have to add header here so just add a comment as app header that's it okay and here you can so again inside here we have to create a new file inside the component which is header bar and again you can just react native functional ex export now bring it down here okay so this will have some other properties but first of all we have to uh, set the props so first header bar props and that way we can define title so the props are the properties of this component so we have set this a title which is and put this question mark because it's an optional so that's why so we only require this one property header bar props yeah that's it now if you can see here we haven't actually used it okay so first of all we will design this or we can directly build this here right header bar okay so now you can see some text in black here but we can wait for that so the first one is we have to define the style here header container so it will be very small component that's why we are i'm not going into split screen here it will have padding of spacing around space 30 will work then flex direction of row because our header is in row form that's why 
then align items to center and then justify content to space between because we need empty space between these two icons and inside this we have two components two more components but uh, we need this header text component as well so whatever you pass to the title we will have that and it is showing this red line because we haven't imported it from here we did show the set the header props what what is the type of that but we didn't imported it so that's why we need this okay so that's it and here we need to add the header styles so you can set either header text and it will be of styles so that's why and here we have to add some more properties like font family from font family which is coming from uh, from theme so here we need to add the semi bold and then font size which is coming from font size dot size 20 20 will work and the color so color is pure white color so if you go here like that okay so now you can see here our header text is here and i don't understand why is it not visible okay let it be so again we have two more components here so the first one is this gradient icon and another one is profile picture so for that we are going to create a gradient icon component so again inside the component new file inset gradient icon not gradient gradient bg icon dot tsx again react native functional export and pull it down here and again profile pick so profile pick dot tsx and same here react native functional export so in the gradient icon what we are going to do so in this gradient bg icon we have to add some more properties and we also have to define the props so again interface gradient bg icon prop and we have to give name of type string color of type string and then size of type number that way we can customize the uh, gradient bg icon okay now here we have to get all those three as well so name color and size and it is showing this error because we haven't set the props type so here we can add react dot functional component with gradient bg icon props like that okay so this is our gradient icon and now we have to modify the jsx of that so it's very simple uh, you have these styles here and you have to set the style of container so we don't have container here and we have to remove this one and here we have to add linear gradient okay and then this one is also requires styles so i'm going to call it as linear gradient bg and it is showing that red line because uh, the most important property of uh, gradient is to have colors that's why so yeah you can just add colors here 
it's an array basically add color colors dot primary gray hex this one and another one is black so primary colors dot primary black hex okay so this one is also now the that uh, red line is gone one more thing we have to set the start and end value so start is like the position where gradient will start so x will be 0 y will also be 0 like that similarly we have this end value but the x value will be 1 y value will also be 1 and inside the linear gradient we have to add a linear icon and uh, sorry custom icon and which will have this name equals name color equals color and size equals size that's it this is our gradient uh, the only thing is we have to add the styles so here we have to add border width of 2 then again border color of color second of colors dot secondary dark gray hex okay then have border radius which will be of type spacing around 12 will work then align items because we have to center the item and for that we need justify content as well now background color will be of colors yeah, it's a container so its background color will also be different secondary dark gray hex and one more thing overflow hidden so whatever going outside of that container it will be hidden same here as well so here we have to add height of spacing 36 will work similarly for width and then again align item center and justify content center okay so our gradient bg icon is done the next one is this profile pic so this one is also very simple only thing is we have to get the image from the react native okay and image and view as well and we don't need this text so first inside the view we have to make our image container so again styles dot image container and do mention it else i don't forget about bringing it down and here we have to add some basic properties which is height so height will be facing dot 36 same as our gradient icon similarly width as well then border radius of spacing 22 not 22 12 actually and then border width of 2 border color of colors dot secondary dark hex gray hex dark gray hex align items and just by content center and overflow hidden these are the properties for this Im uh, view and inside that we're gonna have our image component which also requires styles and don't forget to add this one here so 
and it is showing this error because we haven't added any source so for that just do require and locate the source so it's inside asset slash app images slash avatar dot png that way it will be here and in the image there are not much things you can just copy paste the height and width right right there okay so profile pic also doesn't have any properties because there isn't any property it is it's just a profile pic container that's it so this is our header now here we have to import the gradient bg icon and one more is profile pic so profile if you can see here okay and this one will have color or you can first set the name so the name will be menu then color will be colors dot primary light gray hex and the last one is size which can be used using font size 16 will work okay yeah now you can see here and the reason we are not able to see the title because we haven't passed any title so if you set the title as uh, home screen yeah you can see here the title so yeah we don't need the title for now but we're gonna need that for later for other screens as well but this is this how it will look like now and those are non-interactive buttons so there there is nothing it is only for to display purpose so our header bar bar is done almost everything is done for the header component now we have to see the design what we have to do so this is the text and this is the input field so now we are going to create these two so this is our header bar okay so the next one is text so again we have to add this text so find the best coffee for you this is the text but we have to add a slash n because we have to put in, uh, split these sentence into these two so that we can do this using slash n so this is how the text it will look like and the next thing is this style so set the styles using styles dot this method so screen title again you can come here set the value so it will have not much different properties first is font size of size 28 now first we will have to set font family so it will be of type semi bold and the color will be pure white so you can just do color dot white okay yeah now it will be better and this is uh, looking a little weird because we haven't added any padding so padding left is required here of uh, spacing 30 okay now it is good now the next thing is okay i am ag again doing it right here i can use split screen now now we have to add the search input so again comment here input and here we have to add a view inside that we have to add a touchable opacity opacity this will help to press a button which is our custom icon here custom icon 
like that and we have to add some properties so first the name is search font size is so the size actually is font size size 18 and then again uh, so the color is based on the length actually so for now if you say color it will have this uh, conditional rendering you can say conditional rendering so the search text is, will be dot length if the length is greater than zero so if this is the condition then we can add colors dot orange else we have to add colors dot light gray hex primary light gray hex like that and it is showing showing this because okay so this is undefined that's why so you can just set it like that okay now our icon is visible here and this is pressable actually so if you click on it 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 will act like as a button so inside this view we have this touchable button and the next one is text input so text input this component okay this component will have a placeholder first so placeholder and here you will type find coffee and you may not see it because we haven't added any styles yet so first set the value to search text whatever the value of search text is okay and then and then again on change text on change text we will get a new value from there and we have to set it to search text and set that value okay so the placeholder is this value is this on change method is this then we have to change the placeholder text color so placeholder text color which is colors dot primary gray light gray hex yeah now you can see the text color here and we have to change other properties as well so for that we will add the styles so this is the styles for this text input we also have to add some styles for the custom icon as well so style equals styles dot input icon and there is nothing for touchable opacity but there will be an on press method and for now it will be an empty function and this is the main so style equals styles dot input container component okay so if you go here we have to add the styles so the first one is margin you can say margin is required spacing of space 30 will work now we have to change border radius which will be of border radius dot radius 20 and we can decrease it a little okay border radius is done background color so we do need to give a background color which will be of primary dark gray hex so colors dot primary dark gray hex yeah that's visible and the last one is this flex direction so make it a row and yeah make it a row and the next one is align items so align items to center okay now it is fine again we have to add some for input icon as well so here we have this margin so margin horizontal and it will be of facing 
dot twenty. Yeah, now it is looking fine. And the last one is this text input container. So again, it will have some basic styles, but the first one is this height of spacing twenty into so it will actually decrease its size, but we have to multiply it like three times. Uh, now it is looking good. Then font family of medium. So dot medium poppins dot medium then font size of 14 i think will work one more is color so we have to add a color which is white so so whenever you type Okay, so now if you click here and whenever you type, it will be like that. Okay, but you can see here, this is looking a little weird. So to for that, we can fix this using flex one. Yeah, now it's fixed. Yeah, that way it, the it will take the entire remaining space of the component or you can say container so yeah our text and input field is also done the next thing is we have to add this category scroller for that just add a comment category so that we can uh, different uh, reference it clearly in, in future category scroller and here we will add a scroll view scroll view but this scroll view will be horizontal, not vertical. And then also we have to remove to horizontal scroll indicator to false like this. And remember we have set here vertical, this is horizontal. So there are these two different properties. And the last one is this content container style. So we are not gonna uh, add styles right away first we will styles dot category scroll view style okay so yeah we are not gonna add styles right away first we will focus on the jsx then we will focus on styling so this is done now one more thing try to reload the app and before moving forward just uh, confirm that console log is uh, confirm that we have the categories list and then comma cate categories like that yeah and yeah if you see here all americano black coffee cappuccino espresso latte and macchiato so yeah these are working we have we do have the categories so again you can just comment it out put that comment and you can change on the fly okay so here we have these categories but now we have to map these so categories dot map and what we are doing is we are creating a dynamic we are creating list dynamically based on the array size so our array is categories so based on that data, we are creating the list dynamically inside scroll view. So data comma index, we're going to need these two. And we here we have to return another component, which is a view. And inside that we will have this. Again, we have to check multiple things. So first here we have touchable opacity. And inside that, we will have this text, text component, which will be the data. So if you do it like that, you can see here, 
uh, here is the data it's in black and each style in a list should have a unique key prop so to fix that you just have to go inside this view go inside that and set the key prop so key is like it's like a unique id like in database you have different data uh, you have data and to ident identify them you have a key similarly we have this key for components to identify them to uh, to identify them uniquely so this is touchable opacity and this is the text and there is one more component but it is based on the it is a logical rendering so conditional rendering you can say so if the category is index okay so if that index is equals to the index that we have based on that we can conditionally render a view so here you can add a view and if it's not then you can just template add that template so what does it say does not exist on type string did you mean index of so categories so actually yeah we are wrong here we we have to use we don't have to use categories we have to use category index okay okay so category index and our our index is if it's same then we have to render this view else nothing so this view is a, a little different it's just a basic uh, you can say there is nothing inside that that's why i'm making it a self-closing tag and it just has some styles of active state so you can set st styles dot category yeah so this view is a little different and this is touchable opacity on press it will have a function which is not there for now then styles equals styles dot category text active so yeah here the text is also there is also problem with the text so what we are going to do if the text is active then we will render something else so again same category index is equals to index okay so if this is true again this is the condition then we have to return an object else empty object and here it will be the, the colon so yeah if uh, we have to define this one so but here our here is our condition so if the category index is same then it will be it will have some different color properties else it will have nothing so by default category index will have uh, something which is not active so category text we have to set it like that okay so again we have many things we also need to add some styles to the view so that we can separate them okay so these four are these different styles so first of all this one okay so first of all it will have these padding horizontal which will be spacing dot space 20 and then it will have a margin bottom which will be of spacing same as spacing dot space 20 okay yeah now you can see it is in center but again there are indistinguishable so again copy this one paste it right here add inside that you just need to add padding horizontal of spacing 15 yeah now they are different now nah, and they are scrollable as well uh, after padding horizontal we can add okay so we are missing one more property which is this one style dot category scroll view item so what this property is actually so it is actually this property so first we will decide uh, we will show this active category so 
this has this so it's just height of spacing 10 similarly for width then again we have to decide the border radius but we can change it from border radius radius 10 and the last one is this background color so okay yeah so now you can see this okay so this is the active header and we have to change the scroll view item because uh, if there is any other category or we can i can show it from here so here you can change it to like first only yeah now you can see that the text is in the the, uh, the dot is not in the center so for that we're gonna need this and here we have to add a line item center and yeah now it is center now and the and the last one is this category text so these are like same like here i am just co copying it from here you can add that so the font family will be semi bold here so just do semi bold dot semi bold the size will be different so i am choosing 16 and the color is color will also be different and the color is primary not white but primary light gray x okay yeah and the last thing is margin bottom so margin bottom is required here of space 4 will work yeah okay so one more thing i'm missing is category text here so if the index is like that then we have to change the active text so here you can see it's still gray so just change the this property here add this property inside this curly braces and change the property to orange yeah now you can see whatever our category is it will change okay so one method uh, remaining here which is this active category so we are not able to change the category here for that what we have to do so here we have to set category set category index and here we have to pass the data so the index will be the current index okay and another one is category will be categories dot index so categories and then index okay so this will change the category index okay and after changing the category index what we have to do we have to set the coffee so here we have to set sorted coffee to empty because when we click on any any of that item or not empty actually we can just get the coffee get coffee list here we can pass the category from the categories and the current index and then coffee list okay so whatever the index is whenever it is tabbed that index will be passed to to that and coffee list will have that uh, category name so then it will resort the index and if you want to check you can just can just uncomment it and you can see sorted coffee and here you have to change the sorted coffee dot length okay so yeah now you can see here here are three but when you click on all it will be 18 and the rest are three because they are only have these three okay so the, yeah it's working now i'm gonna set it as all and one more thing you can do here here is that you can expand the list so use these three dots that way and then again wrap this inside an array okay so this will create a new array you can see here we are destructuring the array and adding uh, setting it to the set sorted coffee okay 
so that way our sorted coffee is also changing and our active item is also changing you can see right here okay so just remove this console log again we don't need that for now so our category index is completed as well so this is the scroll view now the next one is our flat list so here we have to add coffee flat list and another one is this one which is beans flat list we're gonna do that later but first we will focus on the flat list okay so what does it say virtualized list should never be nested okay so this is because flat list by default surrenders vertically so for that we have to again add horizontal here okay so there are some more props okay so first thing is this to horizontal so we have to set it to false then the next one is the data so data is our sorted coffee and uh, the next one is again the content container style so this one is different so i'm gonna just add the name so the name is let list container okay so this will be our container data is also set although it is not defined that's why it is showing that error and the last one is this key extractor so key extractor and it will have this item so it will have item and from there yeah so now it will not be confused which item to because as uh, we did this in scroll view where we added the key item like that similarly it requires this key extractor okay so this is fixed now the next one is render item so again do this now it will have okay so this is our render component and we we are going to build a card because if you see in the de design both of them have this same design actually i forgot to add this rating but they have exact same design all the only the internal data will be changing so that's why we are going to make that as it a component that way it will not put any rework for the beans list so for now i am just adding this category so first of all it will have this gap property which is spacing dot space 20 then have padding vertical which is also spacing dot space 20 and the last one is padding horizontal so padding horizontal will have spacing of 30 okay so that way here we have to render a component basically so again here we have to make a component before before that so again go to the components folder create a new file as coffee card dot tsx react native functional export yeah it is working now okay and we have to use this component here and we can also pass the name here actually so coffee card here pass the name as here our item is this is our item so item dot name if you pass it like that you can see here coffee card everything change the flat list like that name and here you can render the name actually yeah now their name is different but if you go to america no it will show only three so yeah so now we will focus on building this coffee card okay so first of all we have to set the uh, width of our card which is 
card width equals dimensions dot get width get window dot width into 0.32 i think that's was the number yeah and now here we have to decide uh, decide or set the props so again interface coffee card props and it will have these different properties so id then index so it's basically a number then type which is of type string roasted image link sometimes we can mistakenly write a uh, wrong properties that's why i'm copying it from from the data itself then name of type string special ingredient as well so this is the special ingredient average rating of type number then again price so it is an array basically that's why i'm not mentioning it i'm just putting it as any and this button press handler because uh, there is this plus button on the card so we need to handle it in the home screen that's why i'm passing it as a props and not we should not handle it inside the card component so this is our card and we have to add this to the types so react dot add functional component like that okay so now you can export whatever you want and basically actually i need all of them so what i am doing is just copy pasting it right here and removing all these types and we have to do it earlier because all these errors will be caught by the compiler so yeah you can see here d d is not mentioned so i'll set it as id okay so our coffee card will have this linear ba background so linear gradient actually so linear gradient here you have to mention the start then end then styles as well and another one is these colors so this array will have these colors property colors dot primary gray hex and then colors dot primary black x okay the start will have this x equals 0 comma y equals 0 and it will have this one one like that this is gradient so i'm gonna add it here okay and this is the start and style colors okay now inside that we will have this background image image background component so if we do it like this one okay now again it will have this source and this source is coming from this image link square 
so you can add it like that to the source save it and it is saying it is null okay so do you know why is it null because we haven't sent it to the coffee cart so what you have to do copy all these properties and add it like that so equals not so remove the equal add this one so yeah like that okay and yeah remove this one so here we have to add items dot id similarly item dot index then item dot type then item dot roasted then item dot this is a very long name i'm gonna do it later again same long name average rating item dot price and then here will be a function but i am not going to use it right away so that's why i'm not mentioning it item dot special ingredient okay that's fine and here you can just execute a and non empty function yeah just sorry empty function okay and now here we have this source now we can just reload okay so there is no problem because everything is working fine the only problem is we haven't added any styles here so just add styles which are like styles dot card image background and this style will have some different but i'm gonna use them so first of all width so width is actually card width similarly height is also card width and then border radius which will be of radius uh, border radius radius 20 margin bottom of spacing 15 and just overflow hidden yeah yeah now you can see this is our app this is our card okay so okay now we have to check what is causing that problem okay so nothing is there also just add a resize mode mode to cover okay and now we have these properties image link square everything is fine okay now inside this image background we are adding these uh component which is a rating component so which has a star and under rating text so this view will have custom icon and a star so x uh, star and its value so the rating value is coming from average rating and the name is basically a star color is primary color so color equals primary yellow i think no it's orange actually so colors dot orange if you can see here yeah it is there and the last one is size so size equals font size actually the size is perfect but still we're gonna add font size dot size uh, maybe 18 18 is way too much but okay now we can customize this view 
styles equal styles dot card rating container so this is our card rating container this is our text so again add some styles for the text so rating text will be card rating text styles dot card rating text which is right here okay so i still don't know why is it causing props image read on the okay so here it is saying as string okay so we have to change it so we can change it to image props okay so yeah now the error is gone now we have to change the car rating but again we need to add multiple data so we will do that styling a little bit later next one is this text so we have to add this text which is name of the coffee and again special ing ingredient is also included there so if you save it yeah now it is looking like that now here you see this price and this button so again we're gonna need two more containers inside the same container so the first one is this text com container but this one will be the next nested text and what does it mean so here you can add dollar sign here and here you can add the price so price will be coming from price dot price okay it will have these three so for now it doesn't support anything so actually we are sending this price okay so the problem i think so actually we have to send the price this which is second item so if you look at the list we have this array and inside that we have these three items and we are going to add this the largest item that's why it was causing that error so yeah again that one is this one is fixed now so dollar and that thing is also done now we have to add our button okay so here is our button we can add touchable opacity and here inside that we have to add bg icon basically so bg icon component that we haven't created yet so for that go inside this folder create a new file as bg icon dot tsx here we have to import react native functional export okay and now it is fixed but it will not re-render because it is a little bit different and this has some props so again interface props and it will have this name as string color as string size as number and background color as well so bg color which is of type string okay and now we have to add these props to this to this component so again react dot functional component yeah that's it and again we have to get all these data so name color size and bg color okay so all these four properties are taken and here we just have to add some style so style equals basic styles but we have to add a color so icon bg this is the style which is not defined here yet go here define the property so height will be around 30 similarly for width and then basic 
alignment so justify content center align item center and border radius which is actual border radius dot radius of 8 this is our icon here icon background and this the background color will be depending on this bg icon color so that's why we have to conditionally render it so wrap it in an array and then we have to add an object as background color which will be taken from bg color okay and here we have to remove this one with custom icon so custom icon so we will get the name from name color from color and the size from size okay so here it is saying string okay yeah we have to change it yeah now it is fine okay so we have to use this bg icon in here we have to pass the color color is actually white so for that colors dot white then so name is actually add and another one is this background color so bg color here here you have to add colors dot orange and size so size is different here so font font size dot size of 10 will work okay but you can see they are not squared properly so we will see where is the problem apart from 10 yeah 8 will work perfectly okay so this icon part is also done now we have to set these styles for the row so again styles dot card footer row so these are the styles actually so here you can see you can add these styles now we have to customize our card and we will think about the functionality a little later but first we have to uh, fix this card layout so if you go card linear gradient it is done card image is also done now we have to see card rating container which is this one so this is inside the image that's why we have to do a little first of all flex direction as row then we have the background color and we have to change the colors dot primary black rgba that way it will have some transparency then align items to center and then again justify content to center uh, some amount of gap is also required so spacing dot space 10 will work uh, padding horizontal is also required so padding horizontal which will be of spacing dot space 15 and the last one is this position absolute so position absolute here the border bottom left radius this will be border radius dot radius 20 similarly but here the property is a border border top right radius okay so because of this comma it was causing that error and the last one is this top zero and right zero like that yeah now you can see these so the one thing remaining is this text so we have to customize the text as well 
for that again font family of font family medium medium then color will be of of white and the font size will be of 16 so okay so 16 or maybe 14 you can adjust the size it's actually 14 yes uh, one more thing we have to add some line height so line height is there which is of 22 okay and here we also need to customize this size so size will be of not bg icon actually the custom icon here size will be of if 16 is there yeah 16 works properly yeah 16 works properly okay now the card footer here we have to keep this in an array and we didn't see any card email text style so here we have this style as style equals card title And similarly, we have to add a, another title, but the name will be card subtitle. These two are there. And one more thing, we have to add a text for price container. So this one is a little different. So so the styles is styles dot card price currency and it's same for card not but not card price currency it's just card price okay and the most important one is this linear gradient we haven't added any styles to that uh, actually i forgot so we have to add some padding here of spacing 15 i guess and again some border radius as well so border radius of border radius 25 okay yeah now they are looking like more like a card okay so that one is done now we have to style the text so card title here and here we have to add these fonts but we're gonna remove that line height what is it saying okay comma there wasn't any comma okay so the text will be the medium it will be a white and the size will be a little bigger which is 16 okay same for card subtitle so copy that card subtitle Same for that, but we have to change some other properties like it will have this light font. Color will be white as well, but the size will be 10. Okay, so yes, now it is done. Now we have to add this card footer row. So again, do flex direction of row, then justify content of space between because we need space in between then align item center and the last one is this margin top so of spacing 15 will work okay so now there is a little gap in between them so the last one is this price currency actually card price currency and it will have these same uh, properties so these are same almost same only some changes are there dot semi bold you can go for semi bold here you will have orange and the text will be a lot bigger okay so these are orange 
and to change the color of this text we are using nested text so text inside text again and here we just have to change the color to white okay that's it this is how our card list look like and there is nothing else only problem uh, you can not to say problem the only remaining thing is we haven't added that on press because we require the store functions to do uh, to do that okay so this is our flat list which is very simple and this one will also have this on press method but we are keeping it as empty okay so this flat list is done now again we have to copy this for bean flat list and before that we need to add a text here to say coffee beans like that and we also need to add some styles here so styles dot coffee beans title this text will help to differentiate okay so it only has font size font size dot size 18 then margin left of space 20 or 30 i guess uh, yeah it's 30 then again margin top of space 20 then font family is also there of medium and the last one is color so color of colors dot secondary light gray hex okay and i don't understand the reason why is it not visible the text okay for now just copy paste this item here okay now it is visible and you can just okay one more thing we have to remember is we have to add a tab bar height remember we got this tab bar height here we have to add that as well and here the list is a little bit bigger and actually it's different so for that what we have to do first we have to change the content container style here so make it like that and then add in inside an object add margin bottom of tab bar height and now when you save it you can see the entire list here and we have to replace some data here not some actually most of the data so first of all it will use bean list here if you save those yeah now our beans are visible and based on that everything is changing here so uh, there is nothing much to change only thing is these uh, these buttons and these actions so we have to change them but this is how it will look like okay and one more thing which is remaining is the cross button here actually so remember we have this search input which is this component this button this text component and then we should also have this cross button so actually it is not working here as you can see if i type nothing is there so for that i am not able to change that as well okay so let's just uh, build this search functionality okay one more thing here before that we have to set so if you see if i am scrolling it to the uh, entire left and when i click on americano you you will see this blank area then you have to just slide a little then it will come to its uh, view view state so this is a problem of scroll view that's why uh, how not scroll view actually basically flat list 
so what we can do is we can change the ref so for that here we have to here we have to get the ref from the uh, scroll so this is the list actually so it it is of type any for now and then we can use ref like that here it is of type flat list and that's it so actually it's not imported that's why it is causing error okay so this list ref should be attached to this ref so here you can go and type ref equals list ref okay and here you can control the ref or you can say the sliding of these problem so if you go here then yeah like that and when you click here you should you should be changing the list ref as well so the function which is changing the scroll this uh, category scroller is this one here we have this function so here is, is the data here is the touchable opacity so here is the function so here what we can do is we can just do list ref dot current scroll to offset and we can set it animated to true and offset to zero pixels okay so now when you click on anything you can see the animation so yeah this is fixed now now you can scroll here and there and when i click on cappuccino yeah it will scroll to the uh, first item like that so this scrolling problem is fixed now now the last one is this search problem actually it's not a problem now here we have to add a custom icon here so this is actually conditionally rendered item so here we have to check the search text dot length which is should be greater than zero and if it is then we have to add a component here else we can set a empty component and here we have to change this one to touchable actually so touchable opacity base opacity not base normal one and inside that we have to add this uh, custom icon so custom icon you can do that the name is here which is close can we see that actually we cannot because there is no text yeah you can see this black icon so now we will customize this icon so custom icon name is close size is font size dot 18 font size 18 let's see 18 is a little bit bigger yeah 16 will work now we have to add a color so color is equals to colors dot primary light gray hex yeah that will work actually that's it and we have to add some styles because there should be some margin horizontal margining so we have this input icon so if we save yeah now there is some gap so this entire space is here now we have to add a functionality when we click on it it will reset the search search uh, search term you can say search text and we also we have to change the sorted list actually so this should be the function so we're gonna need to add two functions first one is this search one and the second one is this close one so go to the top and here we have to add two functions here so the first one is search coffee function here we will receive a search string and first just add cons like that okay now if the search is equals to empty then we have to do we have to animate the list ref so remember we are animating it here 
so we have to do the same animation because we are actually if the search is not true so yeah we have to animate it because it will change the length of the uh, search string or you can say the sorted coffee now we have to set category index okay so this function what it will do we have to set the index to zero because in the all method you can search for it and category as well to categories of zeros okay so this one is also set now we have to sort the list so set sorted coffee you can set it right here you just have to pass a here you have to pass a function that just uh, sorted the coffee using filter method so this function will have these uh, first of all we have this coffee list here coffee list dot filter this will have an item here of any type and the next one is this we we got access to that item so item dot name so first we have to convert it to lower case so to lower case okay this and then we have to check that does it includes this parameter which is search and we have to lower case it as well because someone may put it in a capital case so in that case okay so this is our coffee list and here we have to wrap it in a array like that and then we have to destructure it like that so that whenever uh, whatever the coffee is searched you will you will be able to set that sorted coffee destructuring the data and it will reflect it on the app so that one is done now we have to just reset the search coffee so it's same function const reset search coffee so what will happen when we are setting we are done with the searching part we have to set it to the category or we have to reset the sorted coffee list so again do it like this one reset this one set categories to the same as this one because let's just say someone clicks on other uh, categories in that case it will cause some error because we are not setting the uh, sorted list based on the category index inside the reset so just just like that and then we have to set the coffee here but here we don't need this one we don't need any sorting or filtering just plain coffee list same and again we just have to set the search text to empty text okay so these two functions are completed search coffee reset search coffee okay so what we have to do in the text input whenever click uh, whenever we click on this search it will check for search coffee so here we have to add search coffee and then we have to pass the search text here okay so search coffee requires this search text although reset doesn't require so when you click on this icon again on press okay now it is working so now one more thing here remaining i'll show you so the thing is first of all we will search for latte yeah now you can see here in the all method it is showing like that even if you change it will go to that and in the, again if you go to the all it will show the entire list so that's why it is good actually and here you can change you can close it right here okay yeah now you can see that animation but if you if i search for latte here it will show the latte and now if i don't want this one and just close this one it will again reset the array and its category index so this is working now but this is the success case so now we have to think of 
failure so if i search for some random and then search for it it is it will look like this one and i don't like this one i don't want this one i wanted to have some item to be rendered if it is failed so for that here is our flat list which is so, uh, showing the coffee because we are manipulating the sorted coffee so there exist one uh, property that we can access which is called list empty component so if the data length is zero then what should be rendered so for that we can render like this one it will have this component here so these only two things so i am gonna say no coffee found or available anything i'm gonna say it as no coffee found and then again we have to change some styles here so styles dot empty container cough empty list container you can say and this one will be have same text as category header so styles equals category text okay now if we save yeah no coffee available but this should be in center and a lot bigger so that's why we're gonna need this one and we can put it input text input container here okay so we have this flattish container you can just put below that and here we can adjust the width actually so width will be actually dimensions dot get window dot width but it should be of some percentage but what i will do is i will just remove the spacing that i that we put before i mean around the container which is of 30 and it is of like from it is to left and right like that okay and if, if you just put background color here as red you can see here yeah this this is how it looks like okay so we have to we, now we have the container completed now we just have to center it and it's a little small container so we can add some padding horizontal not horizontal basically we can add it later first we have to align it so align center align items center and then justify content center as well okay now it is in the center now we just have to manipulate for uh, padding vertical using spacing dot what will be the largest 3.6 but but it's still not enough so we can multiply it yeah now it is enough so if you close here okay so it is not changing very much it is perfect so if you search for some random stuff yeah you can see it like that and then you can close here uh, one more thing you can do is you can just uh, change the sorted value based on uh, while typing so what you can do is search coffee this method so we have this method on press search coffee search text so just copy this one and when when you are typing this one on change text you can do these two things so basically you can add this one here and you can also add that text here as well okay so now you don't have to click on this one you can just yeah so while you are typing it is searching for the list and as you can see okay yeah now we don't now you don't need that okay so just close it like from here and it will set it to its original okay yeah it is working now
we, we can do that in real time so again you just don't need this custom icon you can just remove it from here this so this is inside the search input input container like that it will only change the color if the length is the uh, greater than zero okay so this is a problem yeah so we're gonna need that one as well so yeah there is this dual functionality we can do that okay so this is our home screen which is completed the only two things which are remaining is this add to cart screen uh, add to cart list and another one is this navigation so these two functionalities are remaining so now we can go to the store and we can create a method here so here we have to add two methods here basically so the first one is to add to cart method and the second one is the second one is calculate cart price so these two methods are required here so that we can add any item to the cart both from this screen and from the details screen as well and one more thing here you can see our this is our uh, flat list so here we can navigate our navigate to the detail screens for that just add navigation dot navigation dot push because we are not using it in the first place so we need we need it from here okay so this is our navigation and this is our method temporarily it's uh, it is not accurate actually yeah but it is working so if you click on any of these item it is saying navigation dot push is not it is undefined okay okay so the mistake is here actually we have to wrap it in okay so now if you click on it you will go to the detail screen okay similarly if you go click on this one again you will go to the detail screen so first we will complete this add to cart we can yeah we will complete this add to cart functionality from here then we will build the detail screen so to get started with add to cart so now we will create add to cart functionality inside the store to manipulate the cart list here so for that create this function add to cart and it will receive an a uh, cart item so type it as cart item and it will be of type any and this will return a set function but inside that it will have this produce method because we are going to add uh, multiple layers of uh, we're gonna update the multiple layers so that's why we are using produce which is given by this emmer package so this produce will have state and then it will return this okay so within this curly braces our uh, add to cart logic will be performed so here first we have to create a variable as found so which will be false by default then after that here we have to go through the array so there are multiple functionalities of add to cart so whenever you receive an item uh, there are multiple possibilities which uh, the first one will be that the cart item doesn't exist so if it doesn't ex exist then a new item will be added which is a push into the array a new item will be pushed into the array but if a cart item already exists then in that case uh, considering the size of that uh, item we will increment its quantity so there are these two conditions and that's it there are these two conditions that's why we have to check that does the cart item exist in the uh, cart list or not so that's why so first we will loop through the array here we will check if state dot cart list of that index dot id is same as cart list cart item actually called cart item dot id 
So first we have to check them if they are equal. Then we have to set this found variable to true. And then after that we have to get the size actually. Okay, so now we have to go through the go through that item. So again let i equals zero. Not i, it's actually j. It's it should be j because we are already using i here. J should be less than state dot cart list of that item or that index. And we have to access the prices dot length. That way we will have the list of uh, sizes of, in that item. So then here again we have to check whether the size is same or not. Cart list of that index dot prices and here we have to add the j so we have we are going through the j part so that's why because j is for the prices and i is for that list so we have to access the size and cross check with the cart item so cart item dot again prices of a zero so it it will be a single array because only single item is adding once. That's why we are using this zero index. That's okay. So here we are checking are they same or not. So if this logic is true, that means we have found the size that we are looking for. So what we are doing is setting it true, this variable size, and then we are also adding. Uh, actually updating the state so cart list of that item then prices of that uh, particular price and then increasing the quantity so here is our quantity plus plus now quantity will be increased and after all of these we will break the loop that's it Okay, so this logic exists if the item already presents first thing, uh, sorry, this, the item already presents and the second is if the added cart size is already there. In that case, we are increasing the quantity. But what if the, and then we are breaking the, this for loop, okay. So, but uh, let's just say that there doesn't exist any size of that cart. Uh, of, of, of that size in the cart. So in that case, what we are going to do, we are going to add, or we can just check if size is equals to equals to false or not. So if this condition satisfies, that means size have, has not been found, means whatever we are adding, that is new to the cart, new size to that cart item. So in that case, what we will do, we just push this item. So again, do this one here and just remove this like from here. And we don't also, we don't also don't need one because we are going to push our operation. And here we, we have to push the cart item dot prices of that zero. So this way you can see here state uh, cart list of that index will have this prices array and we will be pushing our new because that doesn't exist in the cart item. Okay. Now our next logic is uh, one more thing we have to sort out again because all of these items are will be inserted in random order. So that's why we have to sort them out. So for that what we have to do. We just have to uh, sort, we just have to uh, apply a sort function there with respect to the uh, sizes. So based on size, it will sort the cart list, uh, cart list prices, not cart list. So it will be done for every. And here exists another one. So I'm going to say it as any and B is also. So this is a custom sort function. That's why we are using this uh, syntax. And here we just have to check which one is bigger. So here we first we will check if 
a dot size is bigger than b dot size okay so if this is true then it will return minus 1 because actually if you see s is actually bigger than m technically uh, in case of characters so s is bigger than m and m is bigger than l but but based on the uh, size logic l is the greatest m is the middle one and the s is the smallest okay so that's why we are returning here we are altering if you re uh, return one that means s is the bigger one so here it, it indicates that s is the smaller one that's why we are returning minus one okay so this is the first condition again and but if the if it doesn't success then again we have to a, have a dot size b dot size and here we will return one that way either one of them will be true and at last we have to return zero here okay so that's completed and now this is our outer loop so yeah here you can see this if case so if every operation is completed here we have to break it so when we have the item then only we are breaking we do not put outside this because then it will break the for loop in the first iteration only okay that's it this is our basic idea of uh, updating or adding the cart the one thing which is remaining is what if that item doesn't exist in uh, in the cart in the first place so in that case we have this found variable so we have to check whether it it whether it is false or not so yeah here we are checking is it false and based on that we are adding an item to the cart list directly which is our cart item like that okay so this function will entirely update a new array okay so it is done again now here we have to add another function which is calculate cart price so every time we are adding these uh, items to the cart so we have to calculate the cart price so for that we are making new function as calculate cart price and again we again we are going to use this set function and inside that there will be a produce method which will also have these state variables and this array so this is our uh, syntax of the function uh, which will be controlled using set and produce methods okay so here we have to walk through the cart list and based on that we have to calculate the item price so first we will calculate the sub item price if you seen in the design or this figma file here you can see in the order history screen every item has this individual price and then the total price of that cart which is this one so adding this one and this one so first we will calculate uh, the price for the single item then we will add an a uh, property or you can say yeah property basically and then we can add this value completely using reduce method and we can calculate the total amount so first here we will create a temporary total price which will be equals to zero then after that we will go through entire uh, list of the cart list and then again here we will check for temporary price so this temp price will be the will equals to be zero and this will be the price of the item with respect to the quantities and their uh, number of quantities and size so first for that we have to go through the entire price array of that item so again let j equals zero j sh should be less than state dot cart list of that index dot price 
price is actually dot length and then j plus plus okay so now we have this another nested uh, or loop and then we can just calculate the temp price based on this formula which is parse float and this will have the price value actually so again go like this one copy this one here okay and this prices will have the j index and then access the uh, price from here and multiply it with the quantity so same formula here but multiply that with quantity so remove this price and set it quantity here okay so this is the temp price equals temp price plus this is the uh, quantity of that item so for the first size multiply it with with its quantity and the price of that size similarly uh, it will be added to this temp uh, temp price so after that we have to set its temp price to something else which is uh, which will be the item price of cart list so set the cart list here of that index and we will create a new item here so item price so this is a new property of the cart list we are adding this property that's why and we are getting this from temp price then to fixed up to two decimal points and then we are going to convert it to string that way it will not lost its decimal values okay and the last one is we have to now calculate the total price so it's very easy actually here you just have to add the total price equals total price plus temp price or whatever the price yeah actually temp price that's it this is our total price so this will be our price list uh, total price of our cart and here we have to update that price to the uh, cart price so this is the store value so here you can just set to total price dot to fixed of two then you can again convert it to string so that it won't be lost it uh, so the data will not be lost the decimal data okay so yeah that's basically the calculate card price functionality these two functionality is essential for the next uh, the detail screen and uh, one more uh, there are two more functionalities are there so first one is this uh, adding the item to the favorite list so when we like any item that item will be added to our favorite list so this is our uh, function syntax add to favorite list and this will have first the type so what what is its type so is it a bean or is it a coffee and the second one is the id actually so which will be again of type string and this will have a function here which will have this set function inside that it will have this produce function and here you have to return the state using this function okay so now we can start from here and first we have to check whether if the type is coffee or the bean so if type equals to coffee or bean and if you look into the data the type is added here you can see here so every data is available in the list uh, only so we you we don't have to look much and inside this one we just have to add to favorite list so here we just have to add that item so we are not only adding this item to the favorite list uh, we we can't just push this item like using dot push method we also have to update the coffee list of our 
item because it will have this true and false value here here is our coffee list so we have to update this item as well and then append a new item to the favorite list as well so these two functionalities uh, need to be done there and handle uh, correctly so again for that just use this for method and inside that first we have to check whether the state dot coffee list of that index matches to the id that we have given because it's coffee it will have a different id and if it's if it is a bean then it will have a different id so that's why so here we can do this like uh, we can do it like this so if the item is we have to check the id like that and we are getting our id from here so this is our functionality uh, you can also change it right here so if our id matches then what we have to do is first we have to check the state of that uh, favorite uh, property so for that again we have to check state dot coffee list of that index dot favorite so state dot coffee dot favorite if this is equals to false then what we have to do if it is false then we have to update this value so just set this value as like that and set it to true okay you can also use not method but yeah I'm, i prefer to do it like this way because it is self explanatory and here we have to add our favorite list and here we have to add the item because unshift so this method what does it do it add uh, remember we use this method to add this all category at the top so similarly when you add an item to a to your favorite list that item will be available at the top of the list and not at the bottom that's why so here we are here we are adding that item so state dot coffee list of that index okay so we are adding that item to the index that's it so first we will check if it is done then this is the functionality so if this matches everything is fine then we will do that operation and break the for loop okay here and we have to repeat this same thing again here but for the else case so again type here else and then paste this method from the top here we have to change it to the bean then again bean list and probably that's it here remember to change everything I don't just change inside the for loop so remember to change it everywhere okay so if it is false then it will be set it to true then again that we have to add that item with the bean list of that index okay so these two are if and else methods and that's it that's it we are just checking whether it is coffee or a bean then we are walking through the array of that respected list checking its id and then checking if it is false because it is adding to the favorite if it's not false then why will be changing it to the true okay so it should be the false then only we will be making it true and then also adding that item to the cart only if it is false not on true okay remember that so our calculate cart price is done add to cart is done add to favorite is done now the uh, now one is remaining which is this uh, delete from favorite list so so when we are deleting the item we only need to pass the id only that's it uh, but uh, we also have to pass the type actually so which type of which type of item it is is it coffee or is it bean because if we are removing it from the coffee list we also have to update the coffee or the bean list 
the status of that favorite because remember we have this property as favorite so coffee and beans both have those properties so here just set the type and id of that to string and then we will change its functionality so the set method will be used which will have this produce method which will have the state method again yeah this is the syntax because we are using this produce method set method have different syntax but we are not uh, but we do need to use the produce that's why we are using it like that now again in that produce method uh, in the delete from favorite list method here we have to check whether if the type is coffee or not so remember to use double equals and then use coffee okay like that okay so here we have to copy this logic entirely here so if you see here we need this logic same as it is here inside this if and else case the only thing is first we are going through the entire coffee list then checking the id that we have here then checking the state so if it is true then only we are removing it so yeah remember this make it true make it compare it to true then make it false here so we are setting its value to the opposite value but we don't have to remove it right here because we are walking through the favorite list that's why and we also have to check the id in that list so yeah remove this one here similarly for the else case just copy this one write else if change it to bean or you can check whatever it is here okay and then replace it with bean list bean list bean list everything to bean list okay and again we have to break after uh, updating the state values of these bean and coffee list okay so after updating them now we are completed with these updating the coffee list but we haven't removed it from our favorite item uh, uh, favorite item list so here we have to use splice method so first we need to use the splice index which will be minus 1 at first then we have this for where we will check the id state dot favorite list dot length i plus plus here and here we are checking for the id so if state dot favorite list of that index has id which is matching to the id that we have given in the arguments what we will do we will set the index of that uh, particular item so our splice index is equals to i and then we will break okay so now we have the splice index of that item and here after that we have to update our list so state dot favorite list dot splice here we have to use splice method and here we have to mention our splice index so whatever the index is we have to mention it and then here we have to mention the number of items so we have to remove one item that's why we are using this syntax and this will update the list because we are using this produce method if you don't use this produce method this will not work certainly also some some features may not work you don't know for the state management library but yeah that's it these are the state management uh, values and these are their controllers so yeah so Currently, there are these four functions which are add to cart, then calculate cart price, 
add to favorite list and delete from favorite list so these four there are three more which is incre incrementing the cart value or the cart quantity actually cart item quantity of that particular size so incrementing and incrementing these two are their functions and the last one is uh, adding that cart item to order history list so removing it from the cart item and then adding it to the order history list so these three functions are remaining and uh, we don't need need them right now but we do need these four functions to work uh, to go forward so we are completed with these four functions now we will move to adding the functionality to our uh, home screen app so here currently we have these two functionalities which is adding to an item to the cart and this is our cart list okay so here uh, i think we should not add any item here we have to add that uh, adding an item to the cart but first we will we should be focusing on displaying the uh, displaying the details of the coffee item or bean item so first of all here we are navigating to the detail screen using this uh, particular function so what we can do is we can pass in a data to the navigation so we can do here we will we can pass the index so from item dot index then again we can pass the id from item dot id and then we can pass the type actually so what type of data it is so type colon item dot type okay so these three are provided to the detail screen through the routes dot param method and yes we are gonna need these same here for the bean list so this is our bean list and we have to provide them here as well sorry my bad here if you go back now okay so this is our detail screen we can reload the app and here is our detail item and here you can get the data so first we have to do navigation and then routes for temporary it will be of type any but yeah console.log you will get the data of routes okay so currently it is not showing anything here if i click on it yeah now you can see id is c1 index is 0 and it is of type coffee okay and if i go back and click on any bean then it will show id is of type b1 index is 0 but and type is bean yeah so that way it will figure out which kind of item to display okay here now it is completed okay so now we have console log our uh, route item route data now we can figure out which uh, item we are viewing actually so again go here if you click on any other item okay so before that what we can do is we will get the item from the store itself so that we will name it as item of index like that because we are going to use uh, the entire list so use st store that we created here and then here we will pass the state of type any and here we will figure out which one to pass so here first we will check route dot params dot type here so if it is of type coffee what we have to send is state dot coffee list state dot coffee list okay which is right here else we have to send state dot bean list okay and after that here we have to mention the index because this is concluded to an array so we can use 
an index here so route dot params dot index that way it will have this index value and again we don't have to worry about the update uh, the data consistency because it is from the store directly now one more method we we can use is our calculate cart price but uh, we will do that later now we have to uh, get started with the design of the screen now we have to build our details screen so for that we will uh, go inside an item and this is our details screens now we can start here so first of all we have to style this container and what we will just split this in a split screen mode here just add flex one and background color of primary black black x right yeah so this is our detail screen now we have to add the status bar here as well so remove this one status bar and here mention the background color which will be same colors dot primary black okay so this one is done now we will add a scroll view so because uh, we don't know the size of the detail screen that's why we are adding this scroll view and everything will be inside that scroll view so it should have it like that and here we're gonna add this show vertical scroll indicator equals to false and one more which is content container style that should be styles dot scroll view flex and this one will have this property which will be flex grow uh, why we are using this property because uh, if you use if we use this property what it will do it will grow the flex value uh, have the entire uh, screen size uh, technically scroll view behaves like uh, whatever the content inside that scroll view the scroll view will uh, get that height inside its content but uh, if we want scroll view to have a default size irrespective of its content then you can set it using this flex grow so here i am setting it as one so if i change the uh, uh, background color here to red you can see this entire space is occupied okay but if i remove this one now you can see there is no because there is no content inside the scroll view that's why we we need this flex grow property which is uh, helpful for scroll view okay so let's go to the design and here you can see this is our detail screen so one thing is we're gonna make this uh, image thing a single component because we're gonna need that same thing here the uh, same uh, image description for the favorite screen so we're gonna need uh, we, we are going to build these three to four components the so first one is this image background image second one is this description third one is the size selection and the last one is this payment footer so we're gonna make this component as well because we are using it uh, uh, multiple places inside card screen inside payment screen as well so that's why we are gonna make this a component so these two components and these and these two core components okay so let's get started with the image component so first of all i'm going to create this new component here which will be image background info component okay here you can just react native functional export and then go like that okay now we're gonna import this component here 
inside the scroll view and image background info that's it now if there is any text there then you will be able to see that on the screen okay so this is the component that we will be uh, building now so close this one and before that first we have to provide all the details of our uh, detail screen to this component because if you see the design it has this background image then the title the subtitle or the special ingredient the ratings the ratings count what type it is bean or coffee then what uh, ingredient it has and then the roast level so all these details and this favorite as well so all of these details need to be sent to this component okay so first we will build this first we will build the props for this component okay so this component will have a, some props interface edit image background info props like this and the first one is this enable back handler because and this will be a boolean type so this uh, sets this design apart so if you see here we are using it in the same in the favorite but it doesn't have that back button and this one does have so that's why we have to make it a uh, boolean button so that that component can show based on the this uh, property so enable back handler change this name to this one okay now the next one is image link this one will be of type image props and you can get this from here like that okay now the next one is type so what type of item it is it will be of type string then id which will be also of type string then this favorite is it uh, true or false the name then special ingredient that is of type string this one is also of type string ingredients then average rating that will be of type string no it will be of type number actually then rating count that will be of type string roasted this will be of type string back handler so this will be a function here that will be of type any and actually this is an optional function so if our component doesn't expect to show that then you can you can do that and the last one is this toggle favorite okay so this one is also a function that that can toggle the item which is uh, liked or not so favorite item so toggle favorite okay so now we are going to use these in the component here and before that we have to set the props type so here just go react dot functional component yeah that's it and here you can see it is showing this red because everything is missing so all these things are missing that's why so here we have to add those properties again 
and then set this comma. Okay, now it is settled. Okay, so this uh, we have to remove this one, and here we have to add an image background from React Native itself. So, image background, and we have to use it here like that. And here we have to add the source which we are getting from image link portrait. Okay, yeah. So it, it cannot be null. Okay, because we are not sending any data. So remember, we have to send all of these data. So just this is our detail screen. Here we have to send every single data. So enable back handler should be true. Okay, now we are getting these props. So what we can do is copy this property. And we are getting it from item of index actually. So let's just rename this one item of index and then all these properties are present inside this item of index. So remember to add item of index and then that property for every single property. Actually, we have to change this name as well. So copy it here. This is the name and here we have to change it as well. So this one and this one like that. Same with this one and here is the we have to copy the index item of index and then ingredients. So Try to keep the property name and yeah, try to keep the property name and their data property same because and this is the function actually. So for now, we are just going to set it like this. These are these will be the empty functions. Okay, yeah, now this is our detail screen. You can see that here. And this is the image. So for now, I'm just shrinking it down. Okay, so this is our Im background image. And here we have added the source. Now we need to add some styles. Okay, so here we can specify the width here actually, which will be 100%. And then aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is different here because so it's actually 200 by 250. You can just remove the zeros and then justify content to space between. Because, yeah, now this is our image. If you, if we go back to any other item, that image will be displayed here. Okay. So this is working fine. Okay. Now inside this one, we have uh, two components and this is rendered actually conditionally. So if enable back handler is true, then what we have to do, we have to return a function, uh, not function actually, a view where we are handling these fetchable opacity like that, which should be imported from here. Okay, here and the second one is this one, but for now I'm setting it as an empty view. Okay. So this, uh, if the back handler is uh, is true, then we have to uh, show two different buttons. So the, this one is first one. This is another one. And here we have to add our icon actually. So 
we we are going to use our component we are re using this gradient bg icon so gradient bg icon and here i will pass which is name left then color so color is basically colors dot primary light gray and the last one is this size which will be font size dot size of 16 yeah now you can see this one okay so it's a bit actually weird but uh, now we are going to use it again here inside this touchable opacity we have to we are going to change it to the like value size will be the same but the color color will be different because we have this value as favorites and if it is true then we are going to show the red color else this gray color so to show the red color just go primary red x okay now it is of different color okay now we have to add some styles to this view actually so that's why it is looking like this so here we can add some styles image header bar container with back i know it's a very long name but we are going to repeat this one that's why i'm setting it like that and similarly we have to copy this view actually set it here here we have to remove this back button we don't need this one and here we gonna change it with without back this one has different properties that's why i'm setting it like that okay so now we will define these two properties here so first one is this one so adding so padding should be of spacing 30 then the first one is this select direction actually so it should be row then align items to center and justify content to space between and if i save it now you can see now they are separated so this are the other style have same property the only property is the justify content should not be spaced between because there are not no two items there is only one item so it should be flex and that's it okay so here it is true that's why it's uh, actually yeah enable handler so here it is actually true that's why it is having this back and this button so i can change it to false and now you can see this is like that so now this is done now we have to work on the lower button but one more thing after clicking on this it is not going back so for that we have to add this back handler actually where it is here it is so we have in the details page we have to set this back handler so what we can do is we can create a function here const back handler this will have nothing but a simple function of navigation dot pop that's it this is only requirement and now you can remove this function and just set it like that and when you click on it yeah we actually we are not using this here so it is not working because we are not using it here so on press here we have to execute this one okay so when you click on this it will go back to the previous screen like that okay that's it so this one is also done one more thing uh, we have this in this one we have this uh, like button so we also wanted to use it because and now we can handle this uh, toggle uh, toggle favorite function as well so similarly we handle this one here 
we can handle that function as well so here use on press and here we can add this toggle favorite okay so this function will have some parameters because we have to check what type of item it is what is the id of that item and what is the state like favorite state that's why so we have to give all those things so favorite type and id all these three things and we have to set that value here actually so it is not working here because we haven't defined it here so first we can define this function here so const toggle favorite and this function will accept these three parameters actually so which one is this favorite which will be of type boolean then this type value which will be of type string and the last one is this id which is also of type string so these three values are expected here and those will be used so based on the favorite what we are doing if the favorite is true then we have to delete it from the uh, favorite item but if the favorite is false means whenever if the favorite is already false and it is clicking then actually we are adding that item to the favorite list so now we have to use these two functions actually from the store so const add to favorite so this is our store here and we are going to use this add to favorite function here so i'm gonna say uh, keep the same name because it will cause less confusion okay so here we have to get the state of type any and then we can get state dot add to favorite list just like that okay so this one is also there now we can replicate it and get this delete from favorite list so i'm gonna keep the name same like that okay so this one is done now and if the favorite is true now this is the main functionality so if the favorite is true then we have to delete that item from the favorite list because we are toggling it actually so here we have to pass the type and id okay but if the favorite is false then we have to add that item to the favorite list here it is and similarly add the type and id that's it okay so when you click on this that item will be added to the uh, favorite list and then if you click it on again then it will remove from the favorite list but it's not working uh, why because we haven't used this function here so this is our toggle handler we have to set this function here now if we save and go to our component here this function is being executed right here so yeah remember to add this one for this single as well so just add it like that okay now if you click on it this will be liked and if you go back go to some other coffee and then come back here it it will be still liked because it is storing it in the just and store okay so yeah this is our favorite list you can add it and now if you want to remove it you can just go here and click it on again and then it is removed okay so that our functional part is done of this image now the only part uh, which is remaining is this info so if you see the design here this is the info part here we are setting this data so we're gonna need to set that so here we will build this view then this view will have another view but first i will set the styles here and i'm not going to style it right now because there are so much to style there so image info outer container okay now inside that there are two rows actually 
so this is the first one again style equals tiles dot image info in a container okay then inside that again there will be a container row because there are these two items so, so for that we have to go inside this one okay and this one will have a style info container row like that and again one more view and this one will have none, no styles but we will have the text values here which will be name of that item similarly we will have the sub uh, special ingredient as well okay now we have to add these tiles to the text here okay so now you can see here we are not able to see actually yeah actually they are uh, right here but they are very light in color that's why so this view part is done now the next one is this properties this view is done now now here we have to define one more view item properties container again inside that we have this view which will have styles of property first like that so and this one has a custom icon actually so which will accept some parameters so name so first we have to compare is it a coffee or is it a name uh, if is, is is it a coffee or is it a bin so if is it a bin then we have to use the name bean okay else we have to use beans similarly for the size because these two are a little different sizes we have to render them differently as well so similarly if the type is bin then we have to use this font size so font size of 18 will work here and here it should be 24 yeah now you can see here this is the bean uh, actually it's beans here and because this is a coffee so this is the custom icon and now we have to color that so color will be the same because it will not change based on the type primary orange okay that is also done here so the first property is completed now we have to add that text here and that text is type actually so here we have to mention the type and the styles will be actually these these will be the conditional styles because styles dot property first or you can say property text first so these are the styles which will be like same and the only thing which is changing is these conditional styles so if which is margin top so we have to change the margin top so if the type is bin okay if this is the condition then we have to change the spacing dot space 4 yeah we have to add this space 4 else if it is not a bean then we have to add space 2 sorry my bad here we have to add this one and then here should be zero like that okay so this is a little complex because our beans icon is a little bit bigger actually it's a little bit smaller and it does have some padding of its own that's why we have to adjust its text then we have to use this same property first actually here so again this one is done 
here is also same property style equals to styles dot property you can just copy this name here and then again it will have these same properties or you can say same values but here it will be a little different so if the type is bean then the icon will be location else it will be a drop so so if it is a bean then it should show where it is coming from but if it's a coffee then it should show the milk contents similarly here we don't have to use any uh, styling for fonts because they are constant here and the font size will be 16 because these icons are identity almost same this primary orange will work and we don't need any extra margin top for the text so we are just removing it right from here so there is no conditional rendering here and we have to replace this type with ingredients actually okay so now you can see here this is coffee milk i don't i know you can't see that because we haven't added any styles to this one okay so this one this is the first row and we can now style them here a little so first we have to add some styles to the info container actually so just add padding vertical of spacing dot space 24 will work and padding horizontal of spacing dot space 30 now now we have to change the background color actually so the background color is this one colors dot black rgba okay and again yeah now now it is good and here we have to change the border radius so border top left radius it should be border radius dot radius 20 times 2 and border radius border top right radius that should be the same actually yeah now it is good okay so this one is done now we have to change the info container inner container actually and here there is just one thing justify content to space between and then flex direction or you can say gap actually so gap will be spacing dot space 15 that's it i know nothing is changing here because inside this view there is only one which is this one so if you see here this is view and this is the top view that's why so that's why we're gonna need one more view right here but we we will add that a, let, a little later first we should focus on this one so container row and this one will have this flex direction that should be of type row now it will change a little okay it is changing then again justify content to space between and align items to center okay now they are again perpendicular uh, sorry in a column so what we can do is info container is this one so name and subtitle is there but this is our property container so we can change it right here so here we can change the flex direction to row align items to center and then gap of 20 spacing 20 like that yeah now they are in a same row actually okay so these are completed now we have to focus on this title so we actually skipped that so here what you can do is you can just add font family 
of medium font size of 12 and color will be white color okay yeah now you can see the text here so this is actually the subtitle here you can change the name to subtitle and both of these have these exact same styles only thing is font okay yeah now you can see that so here should be the semi bold actually and the font should be 24 okay yeah now it is looking accurate similarly we have to add these one also so first the property first this is the property we have to deal with so property first is just a container so that's why we have to set its height to custom height similarly width the same then we have border radius of 15 then justify content and align item center And the last one is this background color, which should be of colors dot primary black hex like that. Yeah, yeah. Now you can see the, them. So one more thing is this text actually. So we have to change it. And it's same actually like this one. A little changes. And everything is same. Only thing is this will be a little smaller okay so now these the, the first row is concluded completed you can say completed so we have these inner info container so this one has only one content and not okay so here after this one in we have to add two views so remember we have this first row info container row we need to again add that after just that so here just add info styles and then again info container container row actually that way it will have some spacing there yeah you can see this is the height is also increased because of the gap property now here we will have this one view which is the rating container and we will not define it right now we will define it later but it has a custom icon here so the name will be star the color will be orange and the size will be 20. yeah now you can see the rating value so this is the custom icon now we have to add a text here which will have average rating and similarly the next one which will have rating counts rating counts okay and their styles will be a different so again just do styles dot rating text and here it will have rating count okay so these two are done now the last one is this uh, roasted level actually so these two are these two are text the uh, last one is this roasted level okay so this view info inside the info container this view is done now we have to add another view because it's it is in a uh, text uh, sorry it is in a row that's why we need to add like that and here we have to add the roasted level here we have to mention the style and this one will have a style of roasted container okay so these three are there 
three to four properties are there so here we will just change them so the rating container will have flex direction of a row of course then gap of some spacing dot space 10 will work and align item center okay yeah now they are in a same line now the rating is over now we have to add the text here it will have font family of font family dot semi bold then font size of 18 and then color of white okay so similarly this one will have the text but the size will be a lot less so same properties we have to change this these two regular change the size to 12 and that's it yeah now it is done and here we have to mention this we have to add the these brackets okay yeah now it is perfect now we have to change the container so roasted container here so this one will have similar properties like this one but here we will change the width to so we have to increase the to eight to two times and just add some spacing of the gap that they have the so spacing of 20 will be fine radius will be the same both will be center and the same black rgba okay that is also done now now they are perfectly aligned and here we have to change the text so row straight text here this will have this font family we will change it regular will be fine here we have to change the font size that's it yeah now it is working fine now it looks good only thing is this milk is very very looking very different so if you see yeah we have to change this a little so which is this location and drop this one right so the text here so the text here should be a little different so i'm gonna change it so i'm gonna make it last and then just gonna add this one here and this will have everything but a little uh, text at the top uh, not text actually margin top so here we will have spacing of space 4 you can just do that plus 4 yeah now it is looking fine okay so the icon is also adjusted and the text is also adjusted based on the type so this icon component actually it is complete uh, not icon sorry my bad image background component so this is our image background component and this is the jsx these are the and everything is working fine the liking of an item going back everything is fine so yeah this component is completed here we can see that okay so now our next task is to display the description so this image component is done now here we will add a footer info area and the style should be then here th there is this text title so i'm gonna say it as description and it will have a style of info title okay 
now here we have to add this but uh, first we have to render this in a conditional man manner so first we will first we will create a uh, state variable here and it will be a full description and it it will be a boolean variable so i'm gonna set it as false that's it and based on this one we can see if it is true means full description is shown then it will render some different content like this one and if it is false then it will show this one okay so this is our conditionals so here we will add a touchable without feedback and it is not imported so that's why it is showing that error okay and we have to import it for both and here okay so we haven't added any element that's why it is showing like that so here we have to add a text here text and that contains uh, item of index dot description okay and similarly here also now if you save it then there is this uh, the text is there so whenever someone presses on it on press what will happen is it will set full description to whatever the previous value it has to opposite of that value okay so this is our on press method we have to copy that paste it also here that's it and here if this is true then it should display the entire text but if it is false then it should display some lines of it so i'm gonna set it number of lines here to three okay that way it will have this uh only three lines not exceeding that and also you can just we have also have to add this style here styles dot description tags so it will have these same styles that's it so this is our component now we will add these styles so just it is here okay don't need this one Now here we can add padding of spacing 20. Okay, so there is one mistake here. I am not using the right. Yeah, this is the description here as well. Yeah, now you can see the black text here. Okay. Now footer area is also defined. Now we have to define the info title here. So it has this font family, font family dot semi bold, then font size of size 16, by 16, then again font, not font, actually it's color, so color of white. and then margin bottom of around 10 so spacing dot space 10 okay so this is okay now now we have to change the description text here and it will have same similar properties but we have to change some just copy paste them right here then we have to add a letter spacing to 0 
bond family will be regular size will be 14 and the bottom margin bottom will be 30 okay yeah now if you click on it now you can see that you can toggle the description so this description part is also done now and we have to do this for size now so again here inside that just add a view and above that just add a text of info title and change it to a size yeah now you can see here and actually we have to remove this one and we have to add that inside the footer info area yeah now it is aligned perfectly after that here we have to design uh, uh, map the array so we have this price array which contains all the sizes so for that i am just making this view with style as style dot size outer container and inside that it will have three items which will be mapped so item of index dot prices dot map and it will have this one item of type any and then we have to map that item which will be a touchable opacity basically and it is not imported that's why it is saying like that okay and inside that here we will have a text actually but the text is rendered based on the type of item and here it is also saying unique key so yeah you can set that here so set the key to data dot size dot size here we have multiple sizes so that will not be a problem and again here we have to set the data to data dot size that will yeah if you can see it is in black sml like that so wait for some time we will just conditionally render them so first we have to render the styles dot size text and we need to render them conditionally because we have to change the font size based on current selection and type of coffee uh, not type of coffee it's actually type of item so first we have to check whether font size so first item of index dot type is equals to bean if it is then we have to return the font size of 14 actually else we have to return the font size of size 16 okay so this is done similarly we have to do the same for color so here we have to set the color and if item of index or uh, not here we have to actually check whether data size and one more thing we haven't set the price so we can change it a little later okay so now we have to set the size text okay so before that we have to ch change the container actually so we have to style the container which is this one this is our container touchable opacity here we have to add a style so the first thing is if you see the design here you can see after clicking on these uh, sizes we can set the price so we haven't done that so we can do right now so in this state here we have to declare a price comma set price it will use use state and it will have a default value which will be of item of index dot prices of zero so whatever the first one is that will have this data and if you see here we have some multiple styles here so that's why we need that 
here you can set the style dot size box and then based on that here we can change the border color so if the border if the data dot size is equals to the price dot size so price dot size so whichever we have selected if it's same then what we have to do we have to change the color so first one is this orange else it will be dark gray hex so orange else it will be colors dot dark gray hex primary dark gray hex like that and we haven't defined any styles of the size box that's why it is not reflecting here similarly for the text here we can now do the color equals to same exactly the same okay now now you can see the s is highlighted here so we have to set the these default styles so first let's just set the set outer container size outer container we can just focus here right here and this container should have this flex value of one so that it can acquire complete space then flex direction of row then justify content of space between and some gap of 20 like that yeah now you can see them in a single line or it may not be visible so now we will set other styles as well so first of all the size box so if you can see here here it is our size box and inside that first we have to do the flex one then background color it will be a little different so primary dark gray hex again then align items to center and justify content to center as well now height height should be a little bit uh, specific so that's why i'm setting it as spacing dot space 24 times 2 that way it will not change based on the size of the text the border radius will be of border radius dot radius of 10 and the last one is this border width so because border width was not mentioned that's why it was not showing any orange color or the highlighted color so border width is 2 now you can see here okay so this is how it will look like we have to work on the functionality as well to select the size so first we will set the size text here so here we just have to set the size and actually this should be white here actually this should be light gray yeah okay so that's why it is visible now sml and here we can just set the font family okay so now it is done now so size text is also done now we have to work on a functionality where it will change the size so now we are clicking it is not working so it is handled here so on press what we have to do we have to set the we have to set the price so set price equals to data remember we are setting this price here of price so we have this access to the data that's why we are doing it so now if we set yeah it is working now so it is completely working and the next thing is okay so this is our scroll view and here we can add an item here not item actually it is basically a component so what what we will do we will create a new component here which will be 
पेमेंट फुटर एंड इन साइड दैट वी विल हैव रिएक्टिव लाइक दैट दिस विल बी एंड दिस विल हैव सम प्रॉप्स विच विल एक्सेप्ट टू विच विल एक्सेप्ट टू प्रॉपर्टीज सो फर्स्ट वन इज फर्स्ट आई हैव टू make it like that declare it and then it will accept this price of type string and then currency of type string okay so these two properties are there but it's actually of type uh, so it will have price actually this price will have a different value there is this uh, one more thing which is first we will change this to price props okay so price props like that and then here we will declare our interface of payment footer props and now here we will have this price value of type price props okay then we will have this button handler of type any and the button title so if you look at the design here here we have this price so this is the object which will have this currency and the price then the second one will have this text add to cart pay 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 with credit card whatever the text is that's it and and the functionality of handling that press so yeah just add here react dot functional component just like that and it is completed now we can access this and here we can get the price then we can get the button press handler then we can get the string here okay so in that here it is our details so we are not using it here right now actually we don't need to and just above the scroll view we have to get the payment footer component right here and it only displays a text but here we have to send the data so price will have this so price will have the price value which is getting from this state variable then there is this button handler button press not button press handler actually button title which will have add to cart value in the next one is this button press handler so button press handler which is right here and we can declare a function here but so now there is these two problems so because this button have different functionalities so if you see in the detail screen this button will add the item current item to the cart if you go here this item has different uh, which is only uh, which only has navigation so if you click on this it will only navigate it it will not directly add to the cart it will not do that it will only navigate and pass this total price data to the uh, to the payment screen and the payment screen have different functionality which is pay from credit card so which is adding the cart item to the order history so all these three have different functionalities so if there is a case where you have different functionalities for a same component you can do that by providing that different functionality so here what you have to do in the payment folder you have to handle the function there on the click so first we will define our component so first one is this view so i'm going to uh, name it as styles equals styles dot price footer then one more this so now inside that we have two views so first one is for the text which is this one which is which says price 
and the second is second one is the actual price so here you can just say price dot price which is coming from this price value this one so yeah these two tags so now again we have to style them okay so the first one is completed the next one is a simple button and one more thing here you can see there is this nested text so we have to do that as well so before the price we have to add price dot currency and then here we have to add price dot text and inside that we have to add that price okay and there needs to be some spacing right here and again you can just add the style here styles dot price just like that okay and now even if you remove this one you, we don't need this one we only need space between the tax and the price uh, sorry the currency and the price okay so this one is handled now so this one is the first component and then the next component is this touchable opacity component which is coming from which is not coming from anywhere okay here and here we have to add a text that we are getting from the button text so button title actually and then now we have to style this touchable opacity so styles dot p button and then this one will have styles dot button text okay now our task is to design the bottom navigation not navigation actually so here we have to do pay button now first we will design the payment footer here price footer actually so it will be of flex direction row basically then again align align items to center and justify content to center as well a gap of 20 and padding of same gap uh, spacing 20 like that if you save it yeah now you can see them here okay now we have to add this price container so this one is different actually so it only has these align items to center and it will have a static width of 100 okay so this one is also done now we have to handle the price title again so font family of medium font size of font size 14 i think and the color dot secondary light gray because it's a title and not the actual price now this one is the price text this one will have the same this one will be semi bold actually and the size will be a lot bigger okay and the color will be orange yeah like that and here we have to change it to the price which will only have this single property and it has this white okay so yeah this is done so the price part is done now the only part is this pay button so go here pay button 
and here we it will have background color of colors dot orange primary orange okay yeah now we have to fix it with plex now it can take the entire area you can see now align items to center again justify content to center then height height will be a static value so you can just say spacing dot 36 into 2 okay yeah now it is done and the last one is this border radius which will be of spacing dot not spacing actually border radius radius 20 will work here yeah that is fine and if you want we can change it to 25 we're gonna but 20 work looks fine here and this is the button text here so it will have same properties almost the semi bold size here will be a little shorter and it will be a white text yeah now it is done now it's completed now you can see the price which is changing based on the current selection of the size okay and you can also expand this one the last thing is this add to cart functionality so we are not handling any controls here we have to use this button press handler so on press here just execute this function not execute it that's it now when you do it like this you can control the uh, functionality in the component so here i have to create a function or add any function so that it will execute that function that way in different components you can have different functionalities okay so this one is also completed and here you can one more thing uh, which is remaining is here our scroll view so our scroll view have these justify content property that should be space between yeah now it is fine now it it doesn't look any weird and this is the best outcome so if you see the functional part here what we have to do is we have to add that item to the cart so when you click on it this should be this item should be added to the cart so we have to handle that here so for that first we have to uh, import the function which is const add to favorite so just copy this one change it to the function add to cart here which is this one okay so this functionality should be handled here and we're gonna make a new function here to handle that so const add to cart handler here this requires some data here which is it will have id then index everything or maybe you can say most of the things name roasted then image link of a square actually special ingredient type and the price data which is coming from this state variable okay so we have to get all these data now i'm gonna set it as any so that it will not cause any red lines and then again we have to call this add to cart function which is here and this accepts some parameters here so it accepts a cart item okay so we can do that by making it an object so just add that exactly and we have to change this price actually so we have to change it a little so first of all this will be prices and it will be a, an array so just set it like that and then we have to expand the 
price uh, value here and using destructuring like that and we have to add a quantity of one here although it doesn't exist here i know and we have to wrap it in a single object like that okay so this is id index name roasted uh, square image special ingredient type and prices so this is our add to cart functionality so whenever you wanted to add an item to the cart you can do that and after that we have to calculate the price so again just use this functionality which is this one calculate cart price here so calculate for a card price so there is nothing only just execute this function right away just like that now it's done and the last thing is we have to navigate so navigation dot navigate and here we are using the uh, we, here we are navigating to the bottom tabs that's why i'm not pushing it i am navigating it so this is our card screen here change like that okay and this functionality or you can say this function needs to be handled here on the payment footer so what data you have to give it so this is our data id so we are getting this id from item of index dot id like that so copy this syntax change the here we are getting this in index so change it right here then we have to give this name then change it to roasted then change it to image link actually so we are getting this image link portrait uh, not portrait actually square so square like that then special ingredient again just copy it from here you can paste it right here and then again you have just have to do that dot special ingredient and the price is coming from the price variable which is this which is this one here so yeah i have given these items to the cart add to cart handler and it, it will handle everything right right away so now if you go to the cart screen here what you can do is you can just get the cart list in a similar way we are getting this uh, coffee list so you can just copy this here and change it to cart list and in the store if you can see here we have this cart list okay so we can get that and get the store from the store not from the just stand okay so now if you go back uh, one more thing we have to console log here and this will have this functionality of not functionality here we have to cart list so what i will do cart list dot length okay so now when i go to the cart list uh, yeah you can say cart list zero here okay wait for some time yeah when you go here the cart list is zero and okay so now i will go back this is the uh, detail page now when you click an item now you can see the cart list so what it is doing it is adding that item to the cart and then navigating it 
navigating to the cart screen so now you have this cart screen one okay now i'm gonna add that same item again of different size okay so there is some problem in the sort function actually so yeah you have to test these uh, like this one so that you don't have any problem so cannot read property sort so it is because we are missing this one so prices is this and yeah now you can know okay so now when you add an item to the cart it it will be still one because we are adding adding the same item but if you go and add an another item here now it will be two okay so our cart list is working fine and now we have to focus on this home screen actually okay so now first we will restart the app and in the home screen remember we didn't add this functionality to button press handler so in the home screen here we have to declare a function you can we have to declare a function here and this function is exactly same as this add to cart okay the only thing is here we have to import th these fun two functions and we don't have to navigate it to anywhere so first we will import these two just like we import it here so just you can just copy these lines here okay and we will change the name to it's a function of coffee card so coffee card add to cart this function this function will accept uh, not accept uh, yeah mostly accept this id index name roasted image link square in special ingredient type and prices so this will accept prices here and then it will uh, actually this one doesn't have any uh, global variable of prices because it's related to the coffee card that's why we are using it like that so we have to remove it from here add to cart we have to execute this function then calculate the card price and the last thing we have to do is toast so toast android we have to use this from react native actually so here we have to use toast android and then we have to show with gravity this what it will do it will show the some message and then after that it will vanish so here we have to add toast android dot short and then toast android dot enter but the message message should be customized so that's why we are using this name that we are getting it from this function here and then after that just type name is added to cart that's it so this is our function and we have to call this function right here and similarly we have to do this because this is beans we have to do it for coffee as well so this is the coffee flat list like that okay so if you see there are two items okay now if i click on this plus button and then go to the coffee okay one more thing we are uh, i remember we haven't called this function here so in the coffee cart we have this function here button press handle but but it's not being called so it is because we haven't mentioned it here okay now it will execute so on press yeah now you can see cannot read property id so it is having some error okay so here we haven't uh, given any values so that's why it, it is saying like that so id that or dot id then index type so here we can just remove this id type index type then roasted 
then image link square then name then special ingredient and the price so price is actually the same like that before so here we have to expand the price and then quantity equals to one okay so this price is coming from this one price and here we have this roasted value okay so remember to use it like that yeah here and in the home screen replace them as well okay try to reload now we have two items already if you go here okay so you can just restart the app because sometimes what happens that data stays in the app and it causes some error okay so if you go again here now you can see there are these two cart list now i'm going to add a bean here now you can see the cart list is three then this one cart list is four then if i add this one again it will not change the cart item yeah it will be four again four four again what yeah here now it's it is like that's so, okay so our cart it uh, cart list is also working the home screen is completely working now we don't have to work anymore on the home screen add to cart functionality is added and the detail screen is also done so here add to cart based on the size is also added and this is our cart uh, cart screen okay so this functionality everything is done for home screen or detail screen as well okay so the last thing is now we have to work on the cart screen because uh, now we have to manipulate the cart items we have to increase and decrease the quantity so we are going to build two more functions in the store for increasing and decreasing the quantity of the cart item size and one last function which is to add that cart item to order history screen uh, to order history list actually so here it is so first we have to manipulate the cart list using increase and decrease quantity and then add this list to the order history list so we are gonna build three more functions here and then we can move forward with building the cart screen so now let's build this increment cart item quantity function in the store so we have built multiple functions here this one okay so now we can build here increment cart item quantity function here and it will have this id value which is of type string and the size of type string and from here we can create our set function and inside that we have this produce method which will have this state argument and this is our syntax for creating function in store so now here we what we will do we will just go through the list of a uh, list of items cart list dot length and here we will compare for the id so state dot cart list dot so this is our that index and here is our id so we have to compare it with our the id that we have from the function and if it is a match then we have to again go in a loop to check which size we have so again we have to use this function here prices dot length so this is our state cart item list of that index then prices and then length so number of length and then just 
j plus plus so this is a simple for loop here and now we will check if state dot cart list of that index dot prices of that index again dot size is equals to the size we have from the function if though if those are same then we only have to just increase the quantity here so just copy that here and remove this size and just add quantity value here just like that and after that just break the for loop yeah so this is our increment cart item quantity so this is not complex that much it's only this one okay so this function is done <coughs> now we have to uh, implement another function which is decrement card item quantities so again this method will have this id value of type string and then again size value of type string but here we have to keep that uh, keep it in mind that when we are removing the quantity we just cannot remove uh, like just uh, do quantity minus minus we can't do that because let's just say there are like uh, size available of 2 if we decrease we can make it 1 but if we decrease that one then we have to remove that size from the uh, cart item so for that we have to implement it in a way so just first copy this function here although we have to check for the equality so that's why so here we are just if the size is same then here we are just incrementing it so everything will be same until uh, we check the size is equals to equals to same or not and then here we have to implement another if condition here so if state dot cart list of that index of prices dot length okay so if the size matches then we have to check whether the length of that is greater than one or not okay so that means so there are two conditions so if an item contains multiple sizes then we have to just remove that size part from that array but if that item contains only one size then we have to re uh, remove that entire item from the cart list so these two are the remove functions that we have to implement so first we have to check the length is greater than one or not so if only single size is present or not so if the single size is present then we have to check the quantity okay because again here we have this prices value so yeah this is the j we are accessing and then here we have to check the quantity so if the quantity is greater than one then we are going to decrease, uh, decrease the quantity you can see right here so here we have to do minus minus okay but if it is but if that's not the case then we have to implement this and we have to remove that so here copy the above part and here we have to remove the price and here we just uh, we have this index so put that index and just remove only one so this what it will do if the quantity is one so if this fails if this condition fails that means the quantity is equals to one and we are decrementing the cart item so what it will do it will access that index and then remove it from the prices so this is the logic of removing an item uh, re just removing the uh, sorry just decreasing the quantity and removing that quantity so this is the removing the quantity and this is decreasing okay so this is where the prices dot length is greater than one okay and now what if the prices dot length is one in that case we have to remove the entire list from the cart list so for that so here we have to check the cart list have multiple prices or not but if it has single price even though there are two possible conditions where the quantity is greater than one 
and where the quantity is less uh, equals to one. That means let's just say we have an item and it has small coffee of uh, three three quantities. And when we click on decrease, even though it has this length function greater than one, where which it fails. So in that case, we only have to decrease the quantity. We don't have to completely remove that. So again, we have uh, what we are going to do. We will copy this condition here, which is this one. So if the quantity is greater than one, so copy this condition and paste it inside this else. And here you can see if cart list dot i dot prices dot quantity is greater than one, then we are removing it here. Uh, we are actually decreasing the quantity. Else, what we are doing is we are just removing that uh, price item. So here we don't have to do that. We have to place this item and we have to remove this with i. That way, what will happen uh, when this condition fails? So if if it has only sorry this one. So if it has only one quantity, then it will go to here and then it will check how many quantity it has quantity value so it has only single size then it will go here and check for the quantity if that quantity is greater than one then it will decrease but if that quantity is equals to one then what will happen it will remove that item from the card list right here so this is the logic for removing the card item and after that what we have to do if this condition is satisfied if the size matches then what we have to do we just have to break it here okay and that's it so this is our decrement quantity function, decre de decrement cart item quantity function. Okay, so these two functions are completed now. And now our last function is this. And our last function is adding this cart item to order history list. So this is our cart list and this is our order history list. So we have to add this cart list to the order history list. That is our fun uh, next function. So I'm going to name it add to order history list from cart so yeah this is a very long name but and it will have nothing in the arguments because it's just a plain function doing its thing and here we only have to access the variables so it will be like this one okay so first let's get this state uh, data from the state variable which is and here we have to calculate the total price of the cart because whenever we are adding that item to the cart uh, history cart we are, we are adding that list as a as an item to history uh, history list order history list that's why so we have to calculate the total price of that cart and then add that property to the card item itself uh, to the card list itself so that's why we are doing this so just do state dot card list here and then use this reduce function and what it will do it will ask for the accumulator so which will be of type number and then it will ask for the value so current value so the current value is an object inside the card list. Okay. And this is of type any I'll, because it's a complex card item. And then here we have to just return this because it's an arrow function. So what we can do, we can just accumulator. It. And now we can access the card uh, current value. So current value here and here we have to access the item price so we have this item price of every uh, cart item here so we just have to access that and what is what it is doing it will calculate the price and set it inside the temp variable that's it and we also have to initialize it with a default or initialized value so it will start with zero and then everything will be added into the accumulator every item price remember we are adding that using this uh, calculate card price so we are setting this price here 
you can see here item price so we are taking that only and we we are just uh, calculating the entire price of the card okay so now the, uh, it's done here now we will move forward with current uh, current time stamp so so here we are just adding that to a simple variable so current card list total price and the, it will be equals to temp dot to fixed so it will be fixed to up to two decimal points and then i'm going to convert it to a string okay so this has our current price and here we have to check first the state uh, so the thing is we have to add this item to the history list so first we have to check here if order history list dot length is greater than zero or not so if so it has it so does it has at least one item or not uh, because if it has some items in it then it will uh, that then we are going to unship that to the top else we are going to just push it into the empty array so if if this is true then what we have to do we have to just state dot order history list dot unship so this is the method we are using and here we have to add our item so first we, we will have this order date here which will be of type new date and we have to convert that date to local string actually to date string here which is a function that converts the uh, date to a local date then we have to add a empty space in between and then we have to add this new date string here so new date again with to local time string so we also have to add the time at which it is added okay so this is our first property of the order history list then the second one will be the cart item price uh, or maybe the cart list actually so just state dot cart list whatever the cart list is and then here we will add cart list price which will have this current price or you can just do it like this one so remove it here and put it like that add a comma here yeah so this is our object here if the state is state dot length is greater than zero then we have to unshift this okay else what we have to do we have to repeat this one but we only have to push this one so copy this entire thing here and set it with push method okay so this will push this item to the order history list and here everything will be same and one last thing is that here we have to change the state value of cart list because we are adding that item to the cart list what we have to do we have to change that list to an empty list that's it now the item is added to the order history the cart list will be empty okay so whenever we execute this function add to order history t o r i so yeah rename this one history list from cart okay so our functional part of the store is completed and uh, we are not going to chat, uh, touch it anymore so you can see here uh, we haven't added any item to the cart because it is staying in the card the items are staying in the card on the device itself so yeah now we don't need this store anymore we may have some uh, syntactical mistakes may or may not but uh, we will move forward with the card screen now so this is our card list and we are printing the list the length of that list and we actually gonna need some more data points here so first now we will need card price which is coming coming from the card price itself so this is the data, data point so just for safety i am setting it here okay now we we need uh, two more functions that we created here which is this increment card item quantity and decrement card item quantity so again just 
duplicate this one it will show some error for now and then again duplicate this one and copy this decrement card item quantity okay so these two are also uh, imported now one more thing we have to calculate the card price here so which we have created here yeah this one so we do need that one so you can just copy this one and this is our calculate card price function here okay uh, and one more thing remember we are adding this tab bar in the home screen so that it will elevate from the bottom we have to do that here as well so just for that what we are going to do we are going to import from its react navigation bottom tabs and what we are going to import use bottom tab bar height okay so we need this one as well so cons tab bar height equals this one and it will have the tab bar height now we will focus on building our ui so now we have access to the data first we will remove this one here and we will mention the style here and one more thing we we, we are going to make it split screen so that we can design the styles here okay so first we have this one here content container style here the and then it will have this status bar as well so status bar from react native and here we have to set the background color of the status bar which is colors dot primary black rgba not rgba it's actually hex okay and now here we have to use our scroll view because we have some items in our cart so and first we have to hide the scroll bar so show vertical scroll indicator to false and then content container style to styles dot scroll view flex okay so these are fixed now now we have to add an item here and before that we have to add our title bar uh, header bar you can say so we are going to import the header bar here and it will have this uh, title as cart if you save it yeah you can see that here and uh, we also have to set these value so yeah go here add this value so it will have this flex value of one and then background color of type colors dot primary black rgba yeah now it is looking like a card screen okay so scroll view now this scroll view flex okay and it will only have flex grow of one so that it can acquire complete space okay so header bar is done now here and we have to wrap this header bar here actually so if you go here we have to make a view here with styles as styles dot scroll view inner view and we have to set this one here and it will have this flex value of one and then justify content to space between okay and it is vanished so that's why we have to add this one here and it is back now so our header is completed now only have the one thing is uh, we have to add a tab bar height here so if i set the background color here of red 
you can see this this is also taken inside the scroll view so we have to avoid that actually that's why we are going to render this one condi uh, conditionally so here we have to add a margin bottom tab bar height here yeah now you can see this tab bar is avoided now so no content is will be rendered under the scroll view okay so that's why we need this view inside the scroll view okay so now i will remove this one okay uh, one more thing which is remaining is uh, we have to wrap it again here because if you see the design let's just say there are uh, not these items so that's if we delete these two items there is space between these items so we have to separate them so the first item is this one so this header and this the list of card items and the second item is this one which is uh, footer button pay, payment footer and that will have this space between uh, space between property that way whenever we have this scroll view inner view it will have two item which has uh, the first one will have this header bar and the list of card items and the second one will have this payment footer so again we have to wrap this in a another view like that and here we have to set the style here which will be equals to styles dot item container and this will have nothing but only simple property as flex one because it should take the entire remaining space of the card so that's why okay so now inside the header bar what we will do we will add this inside this we have to add the list of the card items so for that first we will render the we will map all the card items here so card list dot length so if the length is equal equals to zero we have to first uh, show an animation here which will be a component first so empty container empty list animation so it will be an empty list animation okay and we actually haven't defined this one so we are going to make this a component here dot tsx and here we will have this react native functional export and we can import it right here and if the length is zero then it will show the empty list animation else it will show nothing just like that okay so the length is not zero actually so what we have to do sometimes you have to uninstall the app because to clear the data so for now i'm just okay so what i will do i will remove the app i will uninstall the app and then i will install the app again because i wanted to build this empty list animation component okay okay so this is our cart list and if we go here we can console log yeah it's zero now so now this animation will be executed on the screen okay so here we have to first we will define what is required here so interface empty list animation props and it will have this title of string okay so remember we didn't add that here it will have title that card is empty like that and it is showing this red because we haven't added that to the type so here we can do that
okay so this is done here and we can get the title okay so now we have access to the title now we will first define the styles and it will have styles dot empty cart container here which will have some basic styles here so which will be first take the entire space here and set the content in center that's it then we now uh, now we need to get this lot t view so so what it does it requires a source which will be requiring from here and then here we have to locate the lot t file so lot t and then coffee cup okay that's it now we have to add some style uh, styles so style equals styles dot lot t style and we can set that the same here and we only have to mention the height so we are using the height of 300 yeah now you can see this animation here and it is not playing right now because we haven't added any properties so first of all we have to set the auto play and we have to play it on loop that's it now it is working here okay so this is our lot view animation and just below that we have to add a text of the title that we have here and the styles will be of lottie text and this is how it will look like so here we need to add font family of medium then font size of 16 the color will be orange and the last one is text align so we have to align the text to the center okay yeah now you can see this here okay so the card list is zero and the empty list is here now we have to add our list right there and there is some problem here because we are not adding this item inside this item container uh, remember we have to add that uh, at list so that's why it is looking that looking a little weird yeah now it is in center of the remaining space okay so here now we have to add these items here so just make this view and it will have style list item container here and we can add this horizontal padding of spacing dot space 20 and a gap of same spacing dot space 20 yeah but there is nothing to show here that's why it is uh, looking like that so now what we will do we will add an item here and now if you go to the screen the animation is gone because it is rendering this view okay so now here we have to map our cart items so just open this cart list dot map method and here we have access to the data of type any and from there we will return an arrow function first it will have this touchable opacity and then we have to import the this here
and we don't need this one okay so this is the touchable opacity and it is rendering only one item so first it will have some function here so i am just gonna execute an empty function here and then here one more thing it will have this key value thing so here we have to add a key which will be data dot id okay and now here we have to add an cart item so this is our view here which has this entire so remember we have add this scroll view flex here and then scroll view inner view this is our inner view so here we have to uh, this is our first view so the, now we will make this second view here or actually we don't need to make a view here we can just execute or add a function here so we are going to conditionally render the cart list dot length is not equals to zero if this is true then we will execute something else we will execute nothing here and the first one will have this payment footer remember we have this uh, component here which is called payment footer and it will have some button title so which will say like pay then it will have price value so here we, we are going to calculate the total card price but what we can do is we can just add the price as card price here and one more thing which is currency so currency will be just a dollar value so that's it yeah now you can see here so there is one item in the cart and this is our footer will look like and one last thing is it will have a function uh, functionality which will be like button press handler and this is a custom functionality that's why i'm executing it right here so i'm just gonna copy this one paste it right here and actually we haven't defined this one so what we can do we can just come here and define our function and it will do nothing actually the only thing is that it will do navigation so here we have to import the navigation first and maybe route okay and here we have this navigation dot navigate or you can say push you can also say push to payment screen so this is our payment screen okay okay so if you click on this now you will go to the payment sc uh, screen and this is our back to this screen okay so this one is done now now we have to worry about the cart item so here we have this uh, cart item you can also remove this extra like that and it will work again okay now the next target is to add a cart item here so it is not rendering any item for that we have to uh, create a new component here so this one is done now actually so we will close this one and we are creating a new file here which is cart item dot tsx okay we have to rename it here okay and then okay so cart item is being created and now we will add this function here so cart item that's it okay and now we will have to describe our component so first we will make the props for the component so again interface cart item props and here we will set id of type string 
then we will have title of type string then we will have image link actually but before that we will have this roasted of type string prices of type string not string actually it should be any then type will be of type string here it will have two functions so increment card item quantity handler so this is a function which will handle the plus part uh, when we add this and this one will have the minus part so decrement card item quantity handler these two functions are there and the last one is this image link so it will have this image link underscore square i think yeah and it, it will be of type image props and the last one is this special ingredient so if you go to the home screen okay so sorry in the detail screen you will have this one special ingredient here because sometimes you may use some different spelling okay so this one is also done and image link square is also here okay and this is not this is showing red because we haven't included image props okay so this is our card item props and then what we can do is we can just add those to the function here and here we have to get that data as well so again what we will do copy this thing here and just set it to the comma okay now this is also done now what we have to do we have to use this one in the card screen here so this is our cart item and yes we have to add those here so we are getting this data from data actually so just add data dot id similarly we need to add everything here then title now we have to add the image link square then special ingredient also then roasted as well then prices then type and these are actually functions here so for now i am just executing empty functions okay so everything is done here now what we have to do we have to build this cart item okay so if you can see here you can see the cart item here okay so what we will do we will just add another one here and the cart item is two now you can see two cart items here okay it's in black so i'm gonna change the ui here so first remove this one and here first we will check for the prices so remember we have different layouts for uh, different sizes so a different length of sizes so if there there are multiple sizes then it will have different layout and if it has a single size like here if you see here this is for single and this is for multiple 
so these two are different layouts so what we going to do based on the sizes of the price we will uh, we will change the layout and we will render them conditionally so we have to do prices dot length should not be equal to one that means it if it has multiple sizes then it will execute this one else it will execute this one okay so first we will work on this one and here it will have this linear gradient actually so linear gradient okay so the linear gradient will have this some properties here so first one is this start which is an object so zero y is also zero and this will be for end which is like this one okay so this is the end property and this is the start property then we have another property as colors so we have to add our colors here which will be an array and it will have these colors dot primary gray to colors dot primary black okay and the last one is the style so this one have styles of card item linear linear gradient okay so i'm not gonna style them right now i only care about the data first now there is this view here so it's a multiple quantities so first we will uh, make this first row so it will have this image and the second view will have this uh, title subtitle and rows level so these two will we have so first we will have focus on the image part so this is our top row okay and now we have to print the image here so so we have to import the image here and it will have source so source will be image link square so it will be a square image and actually we have to add some styles here else it will not be visible so i'm going to add this one here so this will have height of 130 and width of 130 as well and this is not visible because we haven't defined the styles for this cart item linear gradient just do flex one then add some gap here so gap will be of spacing dot space 12 will work then padding again of spacing dot space 12 and then border radius so border radius of 25 okay so this is also done and here we haven't added any styles to the view again styles dot card card item row so yeah remember to add this one as well this will have flex of flex direction of row then some gap of space between 12 and that's flex one okay so sometimes you have to re-render the item here now the next thing is we will add that another part of the info so here we will set this styles equals styles dot card item info 
so for now i will just close this one and, and open this one in the split screen view so here i will add card item row not card item row it's info actually and set it to flex one padding vertical of spacing dot space four will work and justify content to space between so that it will have these two info okay so this one is the image then this view this this one will have more details so so there is this first one as an empty view it will have two text elements here and first one will have this name value if you can see here here is our title and there is no title actually so we have to rename this to name i think so this is actually for only single item uh, sorry for multiple items and in our cart we have only single item not single item basically single size that's why it is not visible so what we can do is we can just copy this one here yeah so you have you can see this americano and this beans so what i will do i will add another quantity yeah okay and now if i just remove this one okay so this one is visible now so now we have multiple sizes inside that item so now it will work okay so here we have to change this name to special ingredient now we have to change some styles here styles dot cart item title so here is our cart item title so it will have font family of type font family dot medium then font size of size 18 will work here and then color actually so colors dot white this is cart item title and here we can just add another style cart item subtitle okay and it will have same properties but the properties will be a little different so this one will be regular this one will have size of 12 and this one will have secondary light gray hex okay so yeah this is visible now here now one more thing here here we have added this height and width but the this is not rounded actually so we have to add this border radius and border of type border radius dot 25 yeah now it is looking like accurate actually so if you reduce the size that will also work so this is our cart item image okay so this view is done now now we have to add another view here and inside that we have to add another text which is actually roasted here so this is our roasted text and this one will have styles of so this is our roasted container and again we have to add some styles for roasted text so this one as well so the roasted text will not be a much different from the detail screen so it will have this height of 50 and then width 
will be of 50 into 2 plus some spacing of 20 will work then border radius of type border radius which will be 15 then again justify content to center align items to center and the last one is the background color so background color will be colors dot primary dark gray hex so primary dark gray hex here yeah now you can see this one okay and this is the text actually so you can just copy it right from here paste it here and it will be regular but size will be 10 and the color will be white so okay so this is medium roasted okay so this top part of the multiple sizes is done now now we have to add our size list so outside this one we have to use our prices dot map method inside that we will have this data value which will be of type any and index as well because we have to add that for key so first we will execute this view here and just add this key value so it is just index dot to string this is the method for the view the prices and then here we have to add a style so style should be here which will have cart item size row container and inside that we will add another view and the styles will be styles dot cart item size value container and then here we will add our size box so again one more one more view and here we will have size box okay and now here we have to add our text so for that just add text here and then here we have to mention the size actually so data dot size will be used and again we have to use this one styles dot size text okay so these are being used but uh, this one will have a little different size actually because our these size are for coffee and our bean size will be different so that's why so here you can make it an array and then here you can add our font size so font size will be so if the type is equals to bin so bean will be here and then so whatever if the type is equals to bean then we have this font size dot size of 12 so it should be smaller but for bean but if it's a coffee then it should be 16 here okay and here you can see now what we will do we will define our styles here so first this cart size item row size row container actually which will have this flex one then align items to center then gap will be spacing dot space of 20 flex direction will be row and then justify content will be center okay so now they are in center here and if you look at the this is our this should it look like so this is our size here okay 
So now we again have to add this price, these buttons, and then the quantity. So first we will focus on the size. So, so here there is this another container which will also have this flex one. Then again, align items to center. So everything will be same here. A couple of things will be different. So there will be no gap here. Send and this one will change to space between actually. So here like that. Okay. So now they are in this separate area. So now our next thing is to make this size box. So the background color of the size box will be colors dot primary black then height will be of size 40 and width will be of size 100 then border radius so border radius of border radius dot radius 10 will work and then again justify content center and align items center okay so this is our size okay so what we have to do now we have to add this size text here and it will have the same fonts uh, a little will we will be different so here we don't have need this font size because we are setting it dynamically only thing is here we have to change it to medium and the second one is this light so here it will be light gray hex secondary one yeah now this is perfect okay so this view size box is done now inside cart item size value container okay now we have to add another text here but this will be a nested text so first it will have this data dot currency so data dot it will have currency and next one it will have some uh, same as data dot price and there of course will be some space here so i am putting space some here now here we have to add these styles actually so actually what we have to do we have to copy this entire and here we have to add like this and here we have to remove the brackets here yeah now it's fine okay so size text is we have to actually modify that and here i will remove this size text and make it as size price and here i will remove it to size currency and I have to copy this one similarly for size price as well so it will have this same text here not text actually so same properties but their values will be different so first it will have this orange hex color so making it orange hex color size will be a little bigger And this will be semi bold. Okay, yeah, right, right. It's right now. And here we have to change the color only for the size price. And here we will make it white. Okay, so this is also working now. So this one is done. And again, we have to replicate this one. So we need this kind of view again here. So if you see here, just add it after that. Yeah, like that if you save it yeah now they are in, in one side again and now here we can add our touchable opacity so touchable opacity so it is not getting added there so i will add it right here and here is our button so here we will add a custom icon it will have name of minus actually 
then it will have color of color white and the size actually so size will be of font size 10 okay yeah now this is here and first we will create this button here so it will have a style first so the style is of type card item icon like that and we can define our style here so it will have background color of colors dot orange then some padding of space 12 will work so space 12 and then border radius of 10 yeah now you can see the button right here okay so this is done now now you can just copy this button again paste it right here and here they are of size but here it will be add okay so this is plus button this is minus and here we have to add a text between these two buttons so first we will make a view then inside that we will add a text so the text is actually quantity so do data dot quantity now you can see there are these one one so you cannot see actually for that we will modify the styles here so styles dot cart item quantity container so we will define that here and here it will have styles for styles dot cart item quantity text copy that here okay now you can define the container here so first it will have background color of dark so again do colors dot black then width will be of type uh, not type actually it will be of 80 because it's a because cart value may change and it can change the layouts so that's why we have this static width static width now some border radius of border radius dot 10 then again border width of 2 then again border color as well so border color which will be of colors dot orange then align items to center and the last in is padding vertical so there should be padding of space 4 i think space 4 will work so yeah like that okay so now you can see the numbers as well now we have to increase uh, set our quantity text so quantity text is not much different again just copy this one it should be a little smaller here and we have to change the font color actually so here it will be white okay yeah this is better now so these are the multiple layout setup so multi multiple screen size uh, sorry multiple sizes so these are done now but we didn't add any functionality so on press what we have to do we have to execute a function here which is decrement card item quantity handler and we have to pass the id and the size okay similarly we have to handle the increment function as well so again in the fetchable opacity right here execute this function 
and change the name to increment card item quantity okay so our multi layout setup is done so small large now i will add medium so if you go to americano and then medium now this is our multi layout setup and nothing will happen here because we are not uh, invoking that functionality first of all we are only focusing on the cart items uh, the cart layout only not functionality so this one is done now this uh, multi size layout is done now we will focus on building the single layout so that is also same so first what we will do we will copy this linear gradient here because it will be same like that okay and here inside that it will have a view and an image okay and this is not the right way this is the right way here you can add the source so the source is from image link image link square and if you see here there is this cart item linear gradient and if you see the card item this is this should be a little different here actually so if you go here card item i'm gonna say it as card item single linear gradient okay and this doesn't exist here so we will add this new item because this one has a little different layout so first it only has this flex direction of row because it's a single row and inside that there are two items and then again align items to center then padding of space 12 will work so space 12 again gap of spacing dot space 12 will work and the last one is this border radius so border radius of dot 25 should be okay okay so this is our layout and here we have to manipulate the image as well so this is our image and the image should be a little bigger so for that what we will do we will add style so style is equals to styles dot cart image cart item single image single image so this one will have a little different styles so first of all you can just go here and copy the image setup you can just paste it right there and you can change the size to 50 and that's it radius will be 20 okay so this is looking good now and here we have to add the rest of the item so this is for the, there will be two rows again inside this column and then first one will have simple data and the another one will have this quantity so there are these multiple things so here image part is covered now now we will add text so again make a view here set the styles to styles dot cart item single info container inside that it will have another one view and it doesn't require any styles it only requires this so there will be name and there will be special ingredient so special ingredient okay that's it and here we already have some styles for that so you can just do styles styles dot card item subtitle actually so yeah subtitle here and similarly for this one it will be styles dot card item title okay 
so this is also completed now now the next one will this view is completed and after that we have to add another row which will have this style as card item single size value container okay so for now i will not mention that because we will add all of them in a single okay so this is another view and here it will have style of view box actually size box basically so this is our size box and again inside that we will have this text component here and that will have this date uh, prices so we already know it has only single one that's why we are directly accessing the zero index so here it will have the size inside that not data dot size it's just single one okay so this one is handled here if you save them yeah it's here and now we have to access the style so but we don't have to do that because we already done that before so we will just copy from here and paste it right here okay so this is that's why we are doing this so this is small this is a little big that's why because this is a size 12 and this is of size 16 so this is also done now we will add one more text here outside this view which is of price actually so again remember we did that here so it's just copy pasting it so we have to replace this text and here we have to set the prices of zero index okay and there won't be any problem here if you do that yeah it's right uh, it's the same right now okay so that is also done here so this one is done this one is done and we have to change uh, you can see this is a little weird so first of all uh, we will change this cart item single info container we will add styles to it so copy it from here and actually it should be before that and here it will have lex1 then it will have align self to stretch And then it will have justify content to space around. Okay, so now they are stretched, and we have to then now modify this this one. We have to make it a row. So copy it from here. And actually, this one is on the right location, just above this one. And this one will have some properties which is flex direction of row, then justify content to space evenly, and then align items to center. Okay, so now they are here. So we we need to add one more of these container. So wait for that. First, this one is completed now. Okay, so just go here and we have this cart item size value container. So just copy this one and we can paste it just after this view. And there is some differences. So again, we will do prices of zero to everywhere. And yeah, this is looking a little weird actually. So I will change the name. So I will name cart item single quantity container. I don't need this one. So single quantity container. And it will have flex direction of row.
then justify content to space evenly actually and then we will add align items to center okay so yeah now it is looking a little better and the rest of the everything is same here so we don't need to change anything so this is our multiple layout so this is our single layout this is our multi size layout okay so it's completed now everything is completed only thing is remaining is this card screen uh, we should provide this functionality here to toggle this uh, not toggle actually to increase and decrease the item from the card so first of all to do that we will just include this uh, function here so first of all we will just remove this one we don't need that one and we will make these functions right here so this is the first function and another one is this one and why we are making it a different function because we need some extra data like uh not data actually but extra functionality so that's why we are making it like that and add that same arguments to the decrease and in the increase here just add our increment card item quantity which is a store function and pass that id and size okay and after every uh operation we have to cal uh, calculate the card price so we need this one as well okay so similarly here we have to do the calculations and before that we have to decrement card item quantity so which is also a store function so it will be id and size that's it so these we haven't given to our card because if we do it nothing will happen here so for that just come here and paste the function name as well here as well because these are our functions here okay so now if we decrement yeah now you can see it is completely gone and now you can increase the quantity and here you can see the card price here as well okay so when you click on any other item let's just say espresso that is added and here you can see that item now you can increase the quantity here decrease that and if you want to remove click on minus okay this is our cart item so the layout is exactly the same here we have the prices similarly for the single one okay last one is this we are not able to navigate to that item okay so for that what we have to do this is our payment footer button which is also handled actually so this is our touchable opacity here so here we have to handle the navigation actually so when when it is used we have to use navigation dot navigate to details page or you can just say push to details page okay and here we have to provide some data actually which will be used by the details page so here we have to provide the index from data dot index then here we have to provide id which is coming from data dot id and the type which is again coming from data dot type so these three are there okay so now when you click on it that screen will be navigated okay similarly for this one okay so this one is perfectly working fine everything is working fine only thing is now we have to build our payment screen apart from that our uh, card screen is completed now and if you just remove all the items from here this uh, empty cart animation will be shown okay so we are done with this cart screen 
so our cart item is also completed remember we are using these functions so we see them again and we see them again decrement increment okay so everything is fine here our cart screen is also completed so almost home screen the detail screen and if you do this the cart screen all those three are completed here now now our next focus is to build our favorite screen oh which is not needed and we only need our favorites uh, list here that's it so first of all we will get some data from here and first we have to handle the navigation as well okay so now what we have to do we have to get some data so get okay so this is our favorite list we only need this one uh one more thing we got, we need is our tab bar height so so from at react navigation navigation bottom tabs and use bottom tab bar height here so we need that one as well so tab bar height from use bottom tabs so this is our cart and now we can go to the favorite screen which is not being built here so here we have to get two functionalities from store so remember we have these functionalities which is these adding an item to the favorite list and deleting that item so which is here so these two functions are also required so i'm just copy pasting it right here and again last one which is this toggle favorite so again we're gonna need this one because with this one we can just toggle this based on the favorite value so we will send this favorite value id and type and based on that it will toggle the function so we we need that one as well because it's almost just a replicate copy of the detail screen so that's it now we will start building our favorite screen but uh, so remember we don't have to do much work now because we are using we are just gonna copy paste this one directly okay so copy this one card screen paste it right here and it's gonna have some different uh because we don't we haven't included any styles so just copy it from here again these styles paste it right here that's it now use these imports correctly okay so in the favorite screen if you go there it is saying status bar doesn't exist so yeah remember that we have to import everything we have to get the status bar we have to get the scroll view and then again we have to get some other things as well but here if you can see here there are these uh, we don't need the cart item actually and not the cart list here as well because this is just a plain list actually that's why so here we will get the header bar then replace this with favorite list actually we also need the empty animation and we have to replace the text with no no favorites then again replace this with this one we haven't imported it from here and we don't need this cart item actually okay so this is done completely there are no errors now so remember we just copy pasted it right here and here we have this length so favorite list dot length equals equals to zero 
तो वाई इज इट सेइंग लाइक दैट हाँ एक्चुअली द स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक वाज देयर तो या रिप्लेस देम विथ एवरी राइट स्पेलिंग and now if you go to the favorite list yeah so this is working now and here we have to pass the favorites okay so this is our favorite screen and it is showing this because we don't have anything in our item uh in the favorite list so if i go here add an item to our favorite list then it is not visible okay so we have this item here which is not visible and here we have also have to uh, go to the details page we also have these all of these uh, everything is set up right here we the only thing is we only have to add an item to the favorite so we have to add the favorite item here so just say f a and this card doesn't exist actually so that's why we have to make a new component here new file dot tsx and in here we can now import that so or you can just do it by manually i don't know why is it not working okay so yeah we haven't initialized our function here so yeah because of that now it will work go to your favorite item okay so now you can see your favorite item card now we have to modify this one so first i will make this props type so interface props just like here then i am going to add id of type string then name of type string then special so most of the things we uh, we are importing it actually same as this one so actually we are getting it from here so that's why we have to import it right here sometimes i uh, miss the spelling that's why i'm string here so what you can do is you can just uh, add those values here in the favorites card first i will add item here which is coming from data dot id but anyway we can do that here now the next is image link so data dot i'm going to set it as image link and then here i'm going to input the image link so so id is included here actually okay so first of all we will add the items here so all these are properties 
and the last one is this function which is toggle and this function will be executed using this function so which is this toggle favorite just like that okay so now we have to use all of these properties right here so this will be of type string then this will be of type image props which will be coming from react native itself then this is name which is which will be string then special ingredient will also be string then type will also be string then ingredients will also be string average rating will be a number and ratings count will be a string roasted will also be string description is also a string this one will be a boolean and this is a just a function so i'm gonna say it as any all of these are here and then what we can do is we can just copy paste them right in here and just put a comma and this is showing this red because we haven't added to the props so that's why yeah now it's fine okay so we are having we have every single data from the favorite screen even the toggle function so the only thing is we have to use our we have to uh, build our component so so here we will have only two components so basically the first one is this image background info component remember this one and here we have to pass the data and another one is this linear gradient component which will have start from x equals 0 comma y equals 0 then again this end and here we have to change it to one and one now we will have colors here which will be colors dot primary dark hex actually it should be primary gray hex and then primary black hex so colors dot primary black hex so if you go to this one this is our green in it the image source null doesn't exist okay so yeah because we haven't filled any content we're gonna do that a little later first we will focus on the text here start and and colors are done now we will add our styles here container linear gradient so we have to add that this style here then again we have to add a couple of text inside the linear gradient so text as description and another one is as description and here we have to add the styles so styles dot description title and here we will add description text so these three files need uh, styles need to be set and this one 
so the first one is this font this should have font family of font family dot me bold then font size actually so font size should be 16 and last one is color actually so color will be of colors dot secondary light gray hex okay and this will have same properties but different values so this will be regular size will be 14 and the color will be white yeah now you can see that okay so we have to wrap this in a container actually and we also have to make this linear gradient so here we have to mention a gap of spacing dot space 10 and some padding here of spacing dot space 20 yeah now it is looking good and here we have this uh, view here so we have to add some style here because they are like uh, it has these rounded borders that's why so card container will work here so here just mention border radius equals border radius dot radius of 25 and the last one is this overflow hidden that's it okay so this is our favorite card it is not visible because we haven't added any properties to it so if you go into the detail screen here you can just copy it right from here and paste it inside like just like that and here we have to set it as false then we have to remove portrait then this type everything we are getting is from So we are not using annual back handler, so we don't need this back handler. And this is our function, and it is showing some error. So actually, we need this portrait here and portrait here as well. Okay. So yeah, my bad. Actually, we are not using square. We should be using portrait here, and it is says. Toggle favorite doesn't exist. Okay, so yeah, we are using this toggle favorite item here. That's it. Yeah, so this is our favorite screen. If you click here, that item will be gone and this uh, animation will be visible. So let's just add some more items. So this one I have added, this one. and this one so yeah now you can see this list here all of these are included if you click on it you can navigate it to that screen so everything is working fine now so this is our favorite screen so Card screen is also completed. Favorite screen is completed. This home screen is also completed here. Only thing is now we have to add this item. So let's just add an item to our cart here. Okay. And when we click on this, this is going to the payment screen. So these two screens are remaining the payment screen and this order history screen. Okay. So now we will, uh, this is working fine here. So this is just, uh, that's it. This is our favorite screen. We don't need any other things. 
these three functions and these two data points uh, single data point and this is tab bar height okay because everything is same so our favorite screen is also completed now we will focus on payment screen right here so this one will be a little different one so first we will put that in a payment screen view okay and sometimes you can wish to reload the app just to stay safe yeah so this is our payment screen so first of all we will build a static data point here so first i will make this payment list which is an array and it inside that there is an object which will have this name as wallet then icon as wallet so this is our icon and is icon to true so yeah it's an icon actually that's why so these three data points are required and there are total four to five so this one is done next one is this google pay so i'm gonna name it as google pay and this is not an icon actually so i'm gonna remove it and set it as false and this will be a require method so yeah so here i will locate the assets from app images slash not google exactly gpay.png okay so yeah this one now the next one is this apple pay actually it will be false apple pay dot png and the last one is amazon so amazon pay it will be amazon pay and this is false as well oh, none of the files exist okay so this one okay yeah. yeah okay so this is fine now payment list this is our data point and if you see the design here so these are the four list and this one is our card so this is the credit card that we are going to build from scratch and this is the list and this is again the payment footer so this one has different functionality it is just navigation but this one has a functionality of adding that card items to the order history screen or so this is also done only thing is this one and this one so let's just build this payment screen right here so first i will have a use state variable as payment mode which will have a default value of of credit card so like that and it is not important because okay so this is our payment mode that payment mode okay now here we have to remove this one so this is removed now we have to add some styles and here what i will do i will use a split screen okay so styles will be styles dot green container which doesn't exist for now and then here we will have status bar from react native 
so the status bar should be imported from here which will have background color of colors dot primary black rgba hex okay this one is also done now we have to add some styles here so it is flex one then background color is this one color is again colors dot primary black hex yeah it's done and now what we have to do now we have to add a scroll view here so which also we have to import it will have some properties so first one is this so vertical scroll indicator which will be false and then another one is content container style here the so styles dot scroll view flex so this is again another style property we have to add which will have this flex group equals one so now here we have to create our header container so which will have this view and they have some different functionality that's why we are making it a custom and it is only for once that's why again so here we have this header container So actually I will not use that here first I will make the JSX so touchable opacity so again we have to import this one here and inside that there is this gradient BG so gradient BG icon which will have this icon of left then color should be white I guess yeah or maybe primary light gray because primary light gray hex and the size should be font size of size 16 okay so this is looking a little weird because you haven't added any styles and then we need to add a text here out of type payments and then another view because we have to center that but this one will be self-closing view because there is no requirement for anything to put under so because it's a empty container we have to style it like that also so empty view and this is styles equal styles dot header text okay so these three styles are completed here now we can style them right here so the header container will have a padding of horizontal spacing dot space 24 then a vertical padding space 15 flex direction of row then align items not contents actually so it should be align items to center and the rest one is justify content to space between actually yeah now you can see that so header text is here so again it will have font family of font family dot semi bold then font size 
of font size dot twenty, and the last one is uh, color. So color will be white. So just do colors dot white. That's it. Okay. So this is looking good, but this is not center because the width of the item is not that here of the empty view. So now just we will add some height and width so height will not affect much but just for spacing dot space just for just for the sake i am just adding it so that it will not change the layout yeah now it is in center okay so this one is done now here everything is completed for the header part now we have this payments option container again so in the view we have these style equals to styles dot payment options container because we need to add some padding to that that's why which is padding of Pacing pacing dot space fifteen gap of fifteen as well for consistency. Okay, so this is our container, and here we will have some options, not some, a lot of options. So what we will do here, we will render this list of payment options. So just do payment list dot map method and here actually we have access to the data here of type any and then we here we have to return our component so it will again will be a touchable opacity and inside that we will have a payment method which is not being created yet so yeah this will cause an error so payment method we have to create a component here payment method dot psx and inside that we have to use react native functional export and then now we can import this one here each child should have a unique key so this is because we haven't set any key to the touchable opacity. So if we do it data dot name, that is unique and enough. Okay, so this is our method here. And here we have to set some data. So first of all, we will add payment mode equals to payment mode. Okay, then what we will add we have to just give the data to that so name will be name icon will be icon and is icon will also be equals to is icon okay so all of these properties needs to be handled in the payment method so we have these properties here what we have to do is we have to create interface for that and payment method will be of type string name will be of type string icon is not confirmed so it could be a string or could be an image prop so that's why i'm setting it as any And here is icon will be a boolean. And what we can do is we can just add that to the props. And then we have to name the props interface here. So again, 
this is our function name doesn't exist actually name should exist here okay so this is because we are not just sending the name we have to send dot data as well so data dot icon and then data dot is icon okay now it will render correctly okay so this is our yeah you can see this payment method here so now we have to build this payment method component so first get this data change it to comma just like that and here we have to change some styles here so first we will add some styles here styles dot payment card container then we have to add another but first we have to render the inner content based on the is icon so if it has an icon an svg icon so if it is equals to true then we will render this one else we will render this one okay based on icon so if is icon is true then what we will do we will use linear gradient here it will have start of x equals 0 comma y equals 0 and then end as x equals 0 and y equals 0 not 0 actually it's 1 just like that payment gradient is not imported or is it okay so yeah we haven't given any colors here so colors should be colors dot primary gray hex comma colors dot black hex okay so is icon is only for one single thing that's why it is not showing anything so colors is also done last thing is this style so style equals styles dot linear gradient wallet so this is our style here and inside this it will have three components so if this is an icon that means it doesn't have any image okay so if you see our design here this one has icon text and then there is this uh, another text of wallet uh, balance but rest of those doesn't have any so that's why we have to use this one okay so inside this one we have to add another view as wallet row so styles equals okay and then here again we can add a custom icon here because because this is a an icon that's why so here we have to add a name for that which will be wallet then color will be orange so color equals colors dot primary orange and the size will be font size 30 that's it okay so yeah now you can see that so custom icon is done here now we have to add a text and the text is actually a name and the styles will be styles dot payment title so this one is done we have to add another text here which will be a static text so i'm gonna show it like that and the styles will be a little different so that's why i'm gonna add payment price okay so this one is also done 
everything is done here and for this one we can just copy this linear gradient right here paste it right here and here we have to change for this one because it only has these two so i'm gonna say it as regular and there don't need to be any view again so gonna remove this one this payment title should be the same we don't need the balance part and we will remove this one as well and put image here so image from react native so here we have to import the image that will have the source which is coming from icon then we have to add a style here styles dot payment image yeah now you can see this one so we haven't added any styles here yet that's why it is looking this weird so so now we will add the styles here so payment card will have border radius of border radius 15 into 2 you can say okay so border radius 30 will use background color should be primary gray and now we will use this border width actually of 3 okay this is done here okay now what we have to do we have to set the border color actually so for that we can do that dynamically so wrap this in an array comma and an object and here you can just say border color equals if payment mode is equal to the name if this is same then we have to use orange color so color dot orange else we have to use colors dot gray hex so primary gray hex yeah so currently nothing is selected that's why it is looking like that okay so this is done here including the width so add this linear gradient wallet here so it will have this flex direction of row align items to center then justify content to space between actually not center then some padding so some padding of spacing dot space 12 then again horizontal padding so space 24 which is twice of vertical then some gap of spacing 30 no spacing 24 will be okay and the last one is this border radius which is again border radius dot radius 15 into 2 so this is affecting only wallet part okay and here we again have to change some which is wallet row so it doesn't have much things so flex direction then it has align items to center and some gap of space between spacing of 24 actually okay so this is okay now now we have to add this linear gradient but regular so they are actually same but the only thing is we have to remove the justify content here okay so now they are okay now we have to use this payment title as well so so again font family here of font family dot semi bold 
then font size of font size 16 and then colors of colors dot white okay so this is good now now the next next one is this price but it will have the same properties but a little different value so this one will be regular size will be 16 as well and the this will be secondary gray hex light gray hex okay yeah like that so this one is also done payment price only thing is this payment image okay so yes we haven't decided the payment image so height will be of spacing 30 same for width okay so now they are looking perfect exactly so only thing only thing is we have to set the payment mode so whenever it is clicked here so in the payment screen we have where we are showing this list what we have to do we have to set the set payment mode here and then we have to set the name which is getting from data dot name okay so now you can see they are changing so this one is done here uh, we also have to add a footer here so after the scroll view uh, which contains everything we will add a payment footer here so payment footer and then here we will add the button title which will have this template literal like that and it will have pay with this payment method or payment mode you can say and some of the functionalities are remaining so we have to add a price here and we are getting this price from okay so remember we haven't uh, we have this cart screen and we have this functionality so if we go here button button press we are just going to the payment screen so here we can just add an amount here so remember that we are not doing card price here that's it so the amount is card price here and in the payment screen here we can get that data from here so here we have to navigation from a route of type any and here we have data from so we can just do price uh, actually we are getting the data from route dot params dot amount and then here we can just add one more property which is currency of dollar that's it so unexpected token okay so we haven't defined the property here yeah this is okay yeah this is our pay with credit card pay with wallet you can see here pay with google pay pay with apple pay pay with amazon and this is our card price that we are getting from okay so we haven't handled the back button as well here and we also haven't handled any functionality here so we will focus on that a little later but i will just add the button press handler and then again button press handler and we haven't defined any button press handler here so we can do that right here okay so we will do that later First, we have to focus on this touchable so on press what we have to do we have to do navigation dot pop that's it so 
yeah actually we should not do that do it like that here we have to mention like a function so now if you go here yeah it, the back button is also working everything is working here okay so this is our payment screen and the only thing is we haven't added any credit card here yet so this is our payment options container and this is our list that's it so the only thing which is remaining is our payment uh, sorry credit card so first this will be a touchable opacity because we will going we are going to click on that and here we will do on press which will have this function here which will set the payment mode credit card so credit card like that okay so now there is some space then inside this one we will add another view and it will be same as this one where it will not card screen this one here where it will decide its border color but we will do that a little later so first we will focus on the payment screen here so it will have these styles styles dot credit card container wrap it in a function uh, not in an array and in the payment method we copied this we can copy this one we don't need the card screen here so we can set it right here and we have to compare the name with credit card here so okay so this is done here okay so this view is handled here now inside that we have this text as credit card so and it has this credit card title and we have to set the styles here okay now we have this view here inside that we have credit card background and this view will have a linear gradient so so this will have this start value of x0 y0 and then and 1 and 1 now we need to add colors here which will be of an array of colors dot primary gray hex and then again colors of black hex so colors are also done only thing is style so we haven't added any styles here so styles dot linear gradient styles this is also done here now this entire linear gradient will have some views here so first one is this view so we're gonna name it as styles equals styles dot credit card row and inside that we will have two custom icons so if you see that this design so this is the chip and this is the visa logo so first one is this name will be a chip then size equals to so their font size is different 
then the size of 20 actually into 2 and the color will be orange so colors dot orange yeah similarly we have this one here but it has name of visa size will be 30 here and this has white color so yeah okay so these are of similar sizes credit card row so we are not adding any styles here but we will do that so the first row is done here now this is the second one here so so this will have our credit card number so styles dot credit card number container okay then it will have a text so styles it will have credit card number and you can put any number here so 3879 was my previous number okay so now you can just duplicate it four times here and just change the number so these four numbers they will be aligned in a row and then space separated okay so this is another view and the last one is this view which is again credit card row inside that we have these two views so and every view have this text component so this has card holder name and another one has this name Robert Evans. So it will have this different style here. Styles dot credit card name title. And this one will have name subtitle because it's subtitle or small of that. So this is the first view. Okay and this is the second view actually but here we will change the text here so expiry date and here here we will change the value here to 0 to slash 30 whatever it is so yeah here you can see the payment and everything is selected uh, sorry displayed here and that's it this is our jsx now we have to style this one so we will start from here so first get this credit card container so it will have padding of 10 so spacing dot space 10 then gap again spacing of space 10 then border radius of border radius dot radius 15 into 2 and then border width of 3 okay so this is selected that's why it is looking like that now credit card title here so it will have this font family of font family dot not this a semi bold then font size of font size of 14 then color again so color will be white one so color equals to colors dot white and some margin left actually so margin left so it will be spacing 
of space 10. So this is our credit card. Now the next one is this credit card background. So this one has background color of primary gray hex. So colors dot primary gray hex and then border radius of same uh, which will be border radius dot radius of 25. Okay, so this is for credit card and here we have this linear gradient style. So we can just add linear gradient style. So again border radius of border radius dot radius 25 again. Then we have gap of spacing dot space 36. Then padding horizontal. It has a different padding for vertical, that's why. So spacing dot is 15 will work. And padding vertical will have spacing dot space 10. Okay, so this is a little bigger, but when we make it in a row, then it will be perfect. Okay, so now we will add this credit card row here. So it will have this flex direction of row. Then just pack content to space between. And align items to center. Yeah, now you can see that. Okay. So credit card row is also formatted here. Now we have to do the container number credit card number container so it will have flex direction of row again then it will have some gap so gap will be of spacing dot space first i will start with 10 uh, we may increase in future so items dot center here Okay, and the last one is this credit card number actually. So that our credit card is sorted right there. And here we will add the same font, everything. Uh, same. Here we need the semi bold. Okay, so and we will increase the font size. And we do need white. So if we save it, it will look like this. But what we will do, we will add some letter spacing. So letter spacing will be of space, spacing dot space, let's just say four. Yeah, four will work. And if you wish, you can double it. But four looks good. You can just add another one. So spacing dot space two. Yeah. This also looks fine. This one is also done. Now we will build this credit card subtitle here. And actually I forgot to add some styles here. So styles equals to styles dot credit card credit card name container because uh, they are aligned on the left and this one they are aligned on the right that's why so this is the name container and this is the date container actually so if the if you go inside this view this is date container so again we will just copy these font families font uh, styles here so it will be subtitle will have this regular And size will be for uh, 12 actually, not 14. And they will have this secondary light gray hex. If you save them, yeah, just like that. And again, we need this one, copy them. And here we need credit card name title. Paste them and they will look same. Now we will just increase some font size here 
change it to semi bold or medium will be fine and the name to white color okay yeah so these are looking fine but we, here we have to align them so for that we have this card name container and here we have to just do align items actually so align items click start so this is for the start which will not change much but for date container it will change the flex uh, align items to flex end and yeah okay so this is our credit card which is completed now so if you click on this one pay with credit card wallet google pay apple pay amazon pay and then again this one so if you look at the design that's how it is looking click on this and they almost look similar okay we have also implemented the back button so the next one is this pay with credit card so this functionality is remaining here which will be handled by this function not this one sorry this one so we haven't implemented this function yet again one more thing before that uh, we have to make a the payment option, uh, the payment successful animation here. We have that Lottie file here with us. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new function here, not function, uh, state variable, which is show animation. So show animation comma set show animation, which will be use state and it will start with false so this is the boolean for that animation and here again we have to uh, get some store functions so if we go here in the store yeah, i don't know why it is showing this right so yeah add to history we are gonna need this one and the calculate card right so these two functions are uh, re required here so you can just go to any any uh, so actually i will use this calculate card price here and it is showing some error because it doesn't have this store so i'm going to use it the store method calculate card price the other one is this one which is add to order history list from cart this one here okay so these two are uh, also added so what we have to do is whenever we click on this button which is this uh, pay with credit card button what happened after clicking on this an animation should be there and then it should end and then it will it should go to the order history screen so these two three steps are there so first of all what we will do we will set show animation to true okay then after that we will add order history list to card this function doesn't accept anything it 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 can order uh, add that internally so that's why then we have to calculate the card price here as well because we have to empty the card and the, we are emptying the card that's why we have to calculate the new card price and then after that we have to set a timer actually so we have to use this function set timeout here we have to execute a function which is this one and it should be done after two seconds actually so that's why i'm giving 2000 milliseconds so what should happen after two seconds it should stop the animation so that animation that show animation to false and then it should navigate it navigation dot navigate 
टू हिस्ट्री स्क्रीन सो दिस इज अवर ऑर्डर हिस्ट्री स्क्रीन ओके दिस इज अवर बटन प्रेस हैंडलर फंक्शनैलिटी दैट्स इट ओके सो दिस इज द फंक्शनैलिटी एंड वी हैवेंट इम्प्लीमेंटेड दिस एनिमेशन सो फॉर दैट वॉट वी हैव टू डू बिफोर अवर स्क्रोल व्यू दिस इज अवर स्क्रोल व्यू बिफोर दैट we have to conditionally render a an animation so just do so animation if it is true then execute this thing else this thing okay and this is okay we don't have to do anything but here we have to make a component first so i'm going to make another component here new file which is pop up animation and inside that react native functional export and it is a function here but uh, yeah what we can do is you can just execute right here pop up animation yeah okay and now it will accept some parameters here so so these parameters are decided here with interface pop up animation props and then here what we can do we can just add style of type any and then again we need to add the source actually of type any and we have to give them so if you do react dot fc uh, just like that and here we can get that style and sort so this is our animation here it is not shown right now but first we will create this component so first this is our style equals styles dot dot animation container and this style has some yeah so this style has some properties which will be flex one to get the entire space then position to absolute because we are showing it overlay on entire screen so position is absolute then top will be zero bottom will also be zero left will also be zero and right as well so all these are zeros then z index so we have to set the z index to something like 100 like that or you can just change it to thousand as well then background color here so background color is actually colors dot rgba so we are we need to use some transparency that's why background color rgba and justify content to center to center the animation that's it so this is our container here and here is our lottie animation So now we have to import this lottie view. Import so this lottie view is imported from here. And then here we have to give the style from style and source from source, just like that. Also, we have to set one thing so auto play and then loop will be false, so it should not come. Okay, so this one is done here. So now we will use this here. Now we can just set the styles here. So first, we will set the styles from styles dot lottie animation. 
and the next one is source actually so source will be requiring these assets which is slash lot t slash successful so this successful dot json will be used and this lot t animation is not mentioned here so so i will do it just after screen container here and it will have only flex one so this property here okay so this one is also done now this is our cart this is favorite screen and when we do this yeah now you can see animation is also working only thing is we are not able to set the background color of that container so here so the primary black color actually this is different and you can see there is no item in the cart here i'm just gonna add it here and i'm gonna change this to secondary black rgba this color okay so there is an item and when i click on any of these and then click here yeah now it is grayed out okay and this is our order history screen so our pop-up animation is also done only thing is now inside the order history screen which is here we have to get the data so what we can do is from the favorite screen similarly we can import this favorite list close this one and we can just get that data here from the store we have this order history list here yeah this store okay so this is our order history list and just reload the application this is our order history list now we can just this should give us two because there are uh, we added two items to our cart so now you can just say history equals order history list dot length yeah we are getting this two so home screen is also done and see this uh, we are getting some weird assets problem so it happens sometimes so first we will focus on the home screen here so this is our order history screen and now we will build our order history screen so now i have the order history list here and first we will also add some tab bar height so tab bar height and this will come from the import from bottom tabs bar so at react navigation bottom tabs bar and here we can use bottom tab bar height here so we can just say use bottom tab bar here okay now we will move forward with the ui part so first we will change the style of this screen container and i will open this in a split screen view so that i can add those styles right there so this is our screen container then here is our status bar which will have a background of colors dot primary black that's it again and nothing is required here now we will add our scroll view and before that we also need to add a pop-up animation but uh, we will do that a little later first we will focus on scroll view so this is our scroll view and here we have some so show vertical scroll indicator equals to false then content container style will also equals to styles dot scroll view flex this is our container for scroll view now inside that we have this view so actually this is just a plain copy of card screen 
so there is not much of a difference here and this will have style of that same styles dot scroll view inner view and then we, here we have to add a tab bar height so you can see margin bottom of tab bar height okay so this is our inner scroll view and then here we will have our item container because like card screen here we will also have some uh, button which is a download button and rest the content at the top so that's why we have to split them okay so screen container scroll view flex scroll view inner view remember these styles so we can just go here and yet they, they will not be able to render okay so we cannot add that's why so this is our card screen and we have those styles right here even we will have this list item container so why don't we make it right here first we will just add for these four so these will have exact same styles and we don't even need the split screen view here so these four are done yeah now you can see that again you can just copy paste right from here so everything was same again you have this header bar so yeah you can do that as well so inside this item container you have to pass the header bar and before that you have to import it and say here order history yeah this is also visible here now now there there are no items actually i reset the app that's why so what we can do is we can just add an item from here so we have these three item layout now we can add some multiple items so that so that we can have something to view in the history screen and this is our cart list we can just pay we can have this animation also yeah it is done okay so this is our order history screen and now you can see we have one uh, cart item inside our order history so now we can just add our logic here so first what we will do we will render this view just same like that so yeah copy paste from there paste it right here okay and then we don't have this animation so remember to add that and also set no order history here and this cart list replace this cart list with order history list and yeah remember this la list item here so just copy this one and paste it right here and they have the exact same styling as well so we don't need to add anything else maybe we have to change some gap here so we, we will set it to 30 and similar to the payment screen here you can see this this is our uh, pop-up animation so this is our lottery view animation you can see that here so we will need that one too so just add it right here and this one will not have flex value it will have height actually which will be of 250 okay so from from payment screen you can just copy paste this animation so yeah just select this one paste it just above the scroll view and you don't have this show animation neither this pop-up animation so import the pop-up animation and this is our state variable for show animation so import the state use state function or use state hook as well you can just comment out this history yeah so now we have some data here we have an animation also so that we can set that okay so this one is done here the last thing is we have to 
set the list item container so just we have to render a map here so actually we have to make a list so that's why we are using map and we have this order history list dot map inside that we have this data and index and then here we can render a view but this should not be a view actually this is a order history list so what we can do we can just make a component here order history card okay that's it and actually we don't have this component so again in the component folder we will build this from scratch then react native functional export that's it so this is our cart and we didn't imported it so yeah now it will work sometimes yeah each list in the list should have a unique key prop okay so here we can just add any item here or you can just set it like that so key should be index dot to string function here we can do that and now that error is gone uh, this component will also have some other features as well so first we it will have navigation handler so which is a function so i'm gonna set it as an empty function here we will make that later then next it will have order date which is coming from data dot order date okay so now we have that one also we have we also have cart item price or you can say cart list price which is coming from data dot cart list price here and then now you have this cart item so cart items which is coming from data dot cart items okay so all these are requirements of the order history card and actually we are going to build multiple components here so first i will just interface with order history card prop like that and here then we have to change this order date to string type then we also change the price to string uh, string type then this is of type any because it's it is a very big list and the last one is this navigation handler which is a function basically so that is our props and here we have this react native react functional computer component and then order history card props so again in this we can import everything here so import them using comma that's it so here we have all of these and now we will start building our order history card so remove this one and here first have a container of card so i'll name it as card container here then again we have another view that card container we ha will have this uh, first view which has this style of card header so every card header will have these properties as this order date and total amount so this is our card header and these are the card items of order history so we are going to make another component for this one and this is our order history card component so yeah this is our card header inside that we have two views and each one of them has a text that text is first one is this order card order time actually 
and it has this time also so we have this data order date actually so yeah it is set now and we can name it as header title and header subtitle so this both are completed and now we can just copy this view here again and this will have some different data so this is our total amount and then this one is cart list price which is total price of our cart so the top component is done here we can just add some styles for that so so first it will have gap of spacing space 10 will work that's it then card header will have some more properties so first it will have this flex direction of row then justify content of space between gap again of spacing dot space 20 will work and align items of to center actually so now you can see those but they are in black here one more thing here we have to change the order uh, sorry header title so we have to set this header title and he, here we have font family which is of again font family dot semi bold then font size of font size 16 then color okay so these are right and this one is our header title or you can say header subtitle basically and this is our detail so here you, what you can do is you can just set the data so here i'll go for light uh, this will be the same and this one as well so yeah they look like this and what we have to do is we just have to add a dollar sign here okay and if you see here they are a little different from the design so here we have this orange color for the amount and they are at flex end so for that we have to add other another style here so the style is price container and it will have align items of of flex end this will yeah now it is okay and we also have to change the text of here also so it is of it is in orange color so we will change the text and i'm gonna say header price and change it to orange here and this should not be light actually so i'm going to change it to medium and the size should be 18 yeah now they look a little better now this is also over now we will add another uh, and here we are going to render our cart list so which is this one which is not being used for now so first here we will add a style of list container which is this one here and it will just have a property of gap of spacing dot space 20 so nothing is going to render okay so what i will do i will just add another item here so now we have these two items I will just pay. So now that item has been added to the cart, and now you can see these two items. Okay. So this is 
द लेटेस्ट आइटम एंड दिस इज द प्रीवियस वन ओके सो नाउ वॉट वी कैन डू वी विल जस्ट एड अवर मैप ऑफ कार्ट लिस्ट राइट हियर सो वी हैव दिस कार्ट आइटम कार्ट आइटम्स एंड देन वी विल मैप देम सो हियर वी विल हैव अवर डेटा ऑफ टाइप एनी एंड अगेन इंडेक्स ऑफ टाइप एनी and here is our render so because this is a top touchable opacity okay so this is also done now this here we have to mention a key because now if we don't do that then it will cause an error so it will be index dot to string plus data dot id so now it will going to be a very unique string let's see so map of is of undefined here okay why is it saying like that so this is our order history screen here we do have this map dot items so in the store we can check here so yeah actually the cart item is not the problem uh, here it is cart list so that's why it it was showing this error so change it, change everything here and in the order history screen as well okay so now if you go here now there is no problem the syntax was the problem okay so this is the our touchable opacity the cart list and here we will render another item so we are, we are naming it order item card because again we are going to use the same functionality so why can't we just use it again by using a, it as a component so so we have to make this component as well so here is our new file copy the name here order item card and remember this is order history card that we are making and inside that we are making another component order item card and then react native functional export and here we have to use this one now uh, now it will not be any problem so here we have to mention the type so data dot type then we have the name here so data dot name then we have the image link actually now we have a special ingredient as well so dot special ingredient then after that we have this prices array and the item price which is total price of that cart list so uh, a total price of that individual cart item so here we have this data dot item price which doesn't exist actually so first we have to check why Ah, uh, we are using this double so data dot item price. Now it is complete. So these six properties we have to define inside this order item card. So first we will define our prop. So interface order item card props. Inside that, this price will be of type string. and this will be an array so i'm going to say it as any special ingredient will be of type string this one is the image props so i'm going to say it as image props then name is of type string same as the type and this image props will be coming from react native okay so now we have to add this react dot fc order image card props okay and then in this curly braces we have these data so we just have to add these commas
okay so this is done now here now you can see these order item so order item card order like that now we can just build our order item card and this will have no functionality everything will be handled handled inside here which will have this uh, event handler that we are getting from this navigation handler so we will work on that later first we have to work on the ui ux so we will remove this one because here we will render linear gradient it will have start which is an object of 0 y 0 and then end of x equals to 1 comma y equals to 1 then colors which will be an array so colors dot secondary or uh, sorry primary gray hex to colors dot primary black hex and now it will have a style so it will be of styles dot card linear gradient so okay so this is our order history list and here is our linear gradient so we can split this screen or else we will just go like that so first if we see here there is this first row which have the this data so image title subtitle and the item price and then the size array will print this one like that so it is not much of complex so first it will have this first view which is a row actually that will have another view there which contains an image which has this source that we which is image link square yeah this is how it will look like now this is our image then we have to add another view here which has two text components where first one is name and the second one is special ingredient this is also done here that's it so if you look at the design this is the data and we have to separate them that's why we are setting it in a different view it will have this text also and it is basically a nested text that's why so here we can just mention item price and here we can add this dollar sign okay so first this we have to style them here so styles dot card info container then this one will have styles dot card image info container that is done then we have to give some style to the image as well styles dot image then we have this text so we are we have to give some styles to the card text as well so styles dot card title and then styles equals to styles dot card subtitle and then here we have to add this style of styles dot currency or you can say card currency and then here we have to add styles equals to styles dot card price okay so these are the styles so we can create them one by one here first so card linear item here so it will have a gap of spacing of 20 then it will have padding also of spacing dot 20 spacing dot space 20 and a border radius of border radius of border radius dot radius 25 okay so this is completed now this is our info card container 
and here we have this flex direction of row then again here we have to add a justify content to space between and then align items to center okay so this is also done so yeah remember to add the to check for the spelling mistakes yeah so it was padding i change it now it should look like this so this is our card image info container again so so again flex direction should be row and then there should be some gap of spacing dot space 20 i guess and then align items to center yeah so now they are in a center now we have to work on our image so image height will be 90 and width as well 90 and they have this border radius of border radius dot radius 15 okay so 15 will work here and this is fine actually this is how it should look like basically so yeah image is also done now card title so font family here of font family dot medium opens medium will work then font size of font size here which will be of type size 18 and then color equals to white so this is the text capital text now we can just use the card subtitle here and we can just copy them so here they will be regular of font family size will be 12 and this color will be secondary gray light gray hex like that and the next one is this card currency so this one will have the same property this will be semi bold size will be a little bigger a much bigger and this one will have orange color and this last one is remaining so we have to make it a white color that's why and here we can just add this white color yeah so the top part of the list is completed now and everything looks fine okay so now next task is to map our prices so we have these different prices here prices dot map and then here we have the data of type any and then again index of type any then here we have to return a component which will which is basically a view and we also have a key to add so that index dot to string and this one will have style of styles dot our table row so basically it is a table that's why it is called as car table row yeah now you can see here there are these two tables two 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 and these one have single table so now inside this one again we will have another view so there will be two views inside that okay so this is the first one and here we will have a text here so text which will be a size actually so data dot size here and here we have to add a style which is style dot card table row because uh, both of these will have the same styles but this one will have a different so 
स्टाइल इक्वल्स टू साइज बॉक्स लेफ्ट तो दिस वन इज डन हियर एंड हियर वी विल एड अ न्यू व्यू अगेन विच विल हैव प्राइज ऑफ दैट डेटा सो इन साइड दैट वी विल हैव अ टेक्स्ट विच विल हैव डेटा डॉट प्राइज and here we also have data so actually this is a nested string uh, text so what we will do we will just add text here data dot currency and a little space right there that's it here we have to add a style which will called price box right and here is our text so we are going to called price currency and this one will be called basically we have to remove this one here and then add this one in that and we have to set the styles for this one so styles dot price okay so it is because we haven't imported this one yeah now it is fixed so this is how it will look like size of small this one this one this one now we have to add this quantity and their total price of that card so this price thing is also over now here we have to add another view which will be of type uh card table row because all they have property same property which is flex one and flex direction row that's why so this one will have a simple text here which will be x and then again a text here which will have data dot quantity so q u a n t i t y and just add a little space there this one will have style styles dot card card quantity price text and this one will have tiles equals to price tiles dot price okay this is one and now we can just duplicate this one again uh, which will have this card price but this one will not have nested text it will only have this dollar and then here we will have this data dot quantity into data dot price and then we have to change it to a decimal number of to fixed and then we again have to convert them to a string that's it this th this is how they will look like okay so this is done here now we have to focus on the table row everything so we can do this in a split screen so first get this we will get this table row here and here we will have this flex one property then align items to center then flex direction to row and then justify content to space between yeah now they they are in a single row yeah you can see them okay so this one is done now size box left here so this will have a little more styles here so background color will be color dot primary black hex height will be of type 45 because it should be a static one then it should get the entire space remaining then border top radius so i'll show the design here then you will understand you so we are designing this one then this one that's why it requires this views and different styles so this is left and this is right price right size left so and rest of these are text so here border top left radius should be border radius dot radius of 
Similarly, border, top, border, bottom, left, uh, bottom, left radius, just like that. Yeah, this is how it should look like. So both of these radius and then we can add justify content, justify content to center here and then align items to center as well and then border right width so because it will also have that separation now we have to have border right color here so which will be of color colors dot primary gray hex okay so now they are different but yeah they will look a little different after some time now we have to uh, okay we forgot to add this style here which is styles dot size text so here again we will add the styles and this is almost same only there is no font size here so this will change basically that's why so it will have this medium and color will be secondary light gray and here we have to change the font size based on the type so here we have this array and then here we have to decide text size so first we will set the font size here so if type is equals to equals to bean then it will have this size else it will have this one so here font size dot size 12 should be there else font size of 16 should be there so 16 just like that okay so if you see here this is how here they are smaller and here they are bigger that's why so yeah i do forget about that now we have this uh, price box right so it is almost same everything is same like the uh, like we have here here we only have to change from left to right here will be left and this one as well okay yeah now they are perfect so now we have to focus on e and c y here there is a spelling mistake so i will fix that so this is our price currency and this one will have same font everything just a little different will be some different size here and the color i think color will be same okay and the next one is this price value so here we have to change the color here that's it so here it will be white yeah now they are looking great so here we are, do need to add some space yeah okay so now it is fine so again this card table row is done here we have to add the card quantity price text so again it will have everything from here semi bold 18 and then orange and then here we have to add a flex of one and text align of center that's it yeah so this is how it should look like so everything is completed here all, only thing remaining is this functionality of navigation so here we have navigation handler 
So we have to handle this navigation handler inside this touchable opacity. So whenever we click on any item, so on press, we have to execute that right here. And we have to provide some data. So it will have this index of type index, then ID, and it is coming from actually data, that's why then id should be coming from data dot id and the type should be coming from data dot type yeah so we don't need here so this is our navigation handler and we have to get that navigation handler in the component view so we have to execute this function here so so we will create a function here of navigation handler we don't need this one now and here we have this data which is index id and type of any and then here we have to so whenever we click on any item, we have to navigate that to the detail screen. So for just for that, we just have this navigation. So import navigation here of type any. And here we have navigate navigation dot push to detail screens. And also we have to provide that data. So again, just do index id and then type that's it okay so now if you click on this cappuccino we'll go to the cappuccino screen even same for the beans as well so this navigation is done now now we have to add an a button uh, right down here so which will be handled in the scroll view only. So this is our component here at item container. And the next one is this button here. So we will render that conditionally. So if order history, not card, order history list dot length is greater than zero, then only that button will appear. So if this condition is true, then something will happen here. And if it's false, then this will this will happen. So this part we don't have to control, only this part we have. So here we will just touchable opacity here. We need this one. And inside that we will add a text here. So the text is download. It says download. That's it. So it will have style. Of styles dot download button and it has styles for button text like that. Okay, so now we have to define these two styles as well. So here we have margin horizontal actually, which is of spacing dot space 20 will work here and both of both of them are same so i'm just gonna say margin here then we have this background color which will be orange so orange will, is here then align items to center and justify content to center as well then height should be spacing dot space 36 36 actually into 2 and some border radius so border radius of border radius dot radius of 20 yeah this is our download button okay so everything is done here now we have to add this button text
and here we have to add font family of font family dot semi bold then font size of 18 and in color of white okay so this button is also working here but we have to add a functionality that when we click on this and uh, uh, animation should be shown an animation should be shown and then then it should fade away so we are not going to add the fade if away effect but we will just show and then close that that's it so for that we have to invoke a functionality here so when we press on this uh, here we are we just have to use button press handler function so there is some problem yeah now it is fixed so copy this one now we will create a new function here button press handler which will do nothing but so what it will do it will just set the show animation to true that's it and here we have this actually we have to set we have to use the set show animation and then we have to use set timeout method here and then we have to execute a function for two seconds and inside that we, we will set the animation to false here that's it this is the only functionality but we didn't have this animation so we have to change this one successful to uh, download here yeah download and we have this lottie animation of 550 so now when we click on this so animation is also working now this is our card screen this is our favorite screen so if we favorite an item it will be visible here and this is our card screen so here you can see the total amount of the card so 429 429 which is 858 here you can see the 51 so 8 24 and 18 if you add that it will yeah so this is and the quantity is also mentioned here so yeah uh, we will add just one more there with some quantity so i'm gonna increase the quantity so four threes are 12 so almost 12 dollars we will pay with credit card if you want you can also show that uh what payment method is used okay so here you can see this three quantity here of black coffee and everything is here and here also if you want to add you can use any pdf api you can send that json data and you can download that pdf into the device that's it so yeah our coffee house application is completed now and only thing uh, remaining is our splash screen uh, changing the coffee uh, the app icon and changing the app name so for that everything is handled here and do remember to check every function uh, functionality here yeah we are able to navigate if we add an item here then also we are able to navigate and this is our home screen okay so yes our app is completely done now and now we will focus on making this uh, making a splash screen so before making any splash screen or anything just close your node server here and this is your uh, root location so yeah you can close that one as well create a new terminal here uh, and i'm telling you this because whenever you uh, try to build anything in the android folder or if you want to edit an android folder here you should be do this 
thing first. So first go inside the Android folder by using cd android command. And then here, remember we have, we were cleaning the builds. So yeah, Gradle clean. And what it will do, it will remove the build from the project, not from the uh, app, but from the project so, so that you can add new dependencies, everything. You can change the Android code and from there you can just uh, completely build a new build and then you can use that. So here is our app. You can see this is our app name, which is wrong. This is our app icon that we are going to change. And when we open this one, there is this white blank screen or you can say splash screen, which will wait for some time. And then it will open our app. Okay. So we want to change this one. So now we have cleaned our app. Now this is our Figma file. And remember we have this image here. So this is our app icon. So we are using this app icon as a, our splash screen. Okay. So remember we gonna need this uh, background color, which is this one. Uh, you can get it from theme also. So this is our splash screen logo. You can say that. So what you have to do, you have to download this logo and then you have to export this. So you can just export this one. And then name it as launch screen. So this naming is actually very important. So before downloading it, you can download it, then rename it, or you can just rename it uh, right when you are download, downloading it. So uh, rename these to launch screen dot PNG. So this will work and save that. And inside this temp folder, view in a lot. Yeah, this is our app logo. Okay. So now we are going to use this logo for our splash screen. So open your Chrome here and search for app icon generator. This first one. And here you can just uh, generate the app icon or image asset. So click on this image assets and here we have to, and here we have to paste our logo. So just drag and drop here, change the logo to launch screen. Okay. So L A U N C H screen. Okay. So this one is okay. So remove this iOS because we are building it for only Android. So Android and this, and then this 4X. So select both of them and then click on generate. It will download a file here. Okay, so this is our file that we got. So first we have to extract it. Okay, so this is our image sets and this is our Android folder. And here we have this drawable HDPI, all of these assets here. Inside that we have this logo of different sizes. So here it is of almost 100 KB. And here it is of 53. 50 KB. So there are of different size and yeah, there are different sizes. Now we just have to select all of these folders. Okay. And here is our Android folder inside that app SRC main and this RES. So RES stands for resources. So drag them here and paste it inside this res folder. Okay. So just like that so drag them here and paste it inside the rest folder yeah now you can see they are here available here okay so now one more thing we have to do is we have to install a package here because which is called react native plus screen so it may be a old package but this works fine if you want uh, i'll use another package from next time so install this package npm install react native splash screen here. And if you follow the tutorial or you can say their example here. So if you, if you can, if you want, you can read this. Okay. So this is Android step and here you have to import these two things. So here is our Android uh, OS bundle. So update the main activity dot Java file. So which is located here main activity dot Java file. And we already have that because we are using react navigation. The second thing is use this one. So Devrio because uh, let's see what is the version of our 
splash screen so it's 3 actually 3.33 so of if our version is greater than this one then we have to use this one so copy this one and import it right there so now we have added this package here so this one is also done now now in the on create activity we have to add this statement before our on create statement so here is our on create statement inside this main activity on create function okay word on create so we have to add this line here and here we can just change this one saved instant state to this one okay so this is a very little or you can say very basic tutorial now that is all done now what you have to do you have to create a now you have to create a layout folder inside this uh, resource folder so just go here and uh, create a folder as layout okay and here create a new file as launch screen dot x xml launch screen dot xml now what we have to do if you go to my screen here android app src main then rest folder here you have this layout folder and this is launch screen so you can just copy paste it right from here because actually this is android code and it doesn't matter what it is we don't have to learn it but this is the code that i created so i will walk you through what it what it is so this relative layout it's it's uh, just like a view that uh, that takes entire area so if you see here layout width match parent so it matches to the screen so the height and width will will be match matching to the screen this orientation is vertical and it has some background color of primary dark so yeah we are yet to add that so this is a simple view in android and this is an image view which also has this uh, height and width of this 170 dp so dp stands for density independent pixel and this is our launch screen which is our uh, png uh, the logo of our app center crop is uh, positioning it into the center and center in parent is also true so that it will stay in center so this is our launch screen dot xml okay now we have to add this primary dark color so just for that what you have to do inside the values folder create a new file as colors dot xml okay and here again if you want here you can just go in the rest folder values folder and this is the again you can just copy this one here this is our code so yeah we are declaring this color here and this is our uh, background color of our logo so yes this will be used so launch screen and uh, colors dot xml screen these two will be used okay so the android part is done now we have added the assets we have built our launch screen and colors as well and we have also edited the uh, main activity of java so the last thing which is remaining is our uh, hiding that splash screen so if you go to the app.tsx file here you have to use a, a hook here which is use effect you can just remove it from here yeah and then what you have to do uh, you have to hide the splash screen so if i try to open our app without uh, adding this uh, value in the app.tsx or without setting this a uh, splash screen setting then our app will never open because it will stay on the screen so we have to hide that when our app loads so our app loads when we are using this use effect and it has this function here okay so here we have to use our package which is splash screen here yeah this package and it has a function here which is called splash screen dot hide so with the help of this function what we are doing we are hiding this splash screen so how it works like uh, before opening the app 
our splash screen will be displayed and then you can control that splash screen here uh, there are APIs provided by the splash screen so you can use this to hide it and that's it uh, so this is our splash screen completed now we will focus on building our app icon and renaming the app name so for that what we have to do again in the figma file here we have this uh, png asset so if you export here so if you see the preview this is a white icon actually uh, and the background is uh, transparent that's why it is looking like that so we have to export this so export the logo and here you can just name it as logo that's it logo.png and this is our yeah this is how it will look like to add our logo okay now what we have to do we have to go to icon kitchen so here what we can do i will just switch to the dark mode okay now what we can do we can just add an item here uh, select go to the image and we can just drag our png logo here okay so this is how it will look like you can also see the preview then we have to so scaling is center and then we have to change some padding here so if you set zero it will look like this so yeah we have to add some padding here of 20 and it is looking good now okay so padding is 20 and here we have to change our background color so if we go to the figma file here and select this one you can see this color here so just copy that color paste it yeah now you can see the new logo changed so shape is also circle here okay and this is our setting so center set the color set the padding of 20 uh, set it to circle and upload first upload the logo png logo here then download this one so this is our icon kitchen so ex extract this one and here we have all the assets so inside the android folder you will have this play store then rest so these are all the icons so here uh, here we have xml file for the icon and these are the icons generated like this so here you can see this uh, it is a little blurry but this one will be clear yeah so we have to copy all of these assets but before that uh, before that we have to copy this icon which is ic launcher copy it paste it right here and change its name to ic launcher underscore round so ic launcher round dot png so remember to copy this name okay so and you have to do that for every folder except this any dpi so you have to do this for all of these folders and remember to you have you should have these two types of icons then again copy paste here right here change the name and add underscore round that's it for every single icon because this doesn't provide this uh, round image for android actually so that's why we have to do it like uh, manually okay so remember to have these two circle icons okay check cross check them for everything okay now what we have to do select all of these folders including this any dpi v26 uh, so inside this android src copy all of these folders or you can just select them and here we have our android resource folder here 
we have to paste it again inside the resource folder and not inside any of these folders so remember to paste them carefully so yeah so this says it already exists so actually we are changing the app icon that's why so just click on replace yeah so this is our hdapi yeah now you can see the app logo round and normal logo okay so the logos are replaced here and here we have to change a single thing which is remaining is in the values here we have strings okay so change this to coffee house which is our name of our project so coffee house and in the root project of the folder here app uh, app.json so copy this name as well here and change it in the display name not in the name in the display name and save it so your entire application is done here so what we will do we'll just wait for some time first we will uninstall the old application and if you wish you can just remove that clean build again and what we will do now now we will install the new build so so with the help of this command you can install an app into any uh, connected devices and you don't have to build any apk so if you want to just try in your uh, phone without breaking the app without using any metro server then use this command and press enter it will build the app from scratch everything it will take a little more time but now our app will have icon uh, a name the splash screen and the rest of our react native app so yeah wait for some time here okay so now there is no error and you can see uh, we have this coffee house app here so the name is also changed the logo is also changed and when i click on this it will show the splash sc screen first and then it will show the entire app so wait for some time yeah so this is our splash screen which is showing right now and this is the rest of the app if you click on anywhere it will just do that similarly for this one okay and we don't need any uh, you can see there is no metro server here node server so yeah you can just use them right away so no order history no favorites no uh, cart is empty so all these three are showing this animation here okay so yeah this is our coffee house app if you want you can just test them as well this is our app and now if we click on pay this will open our payment so actually i'm using cpu based uh, emulator so that's why it is a little laggy but on the physical device it won't be that much laggy so click on this yeah payment successful and then this is our order history screen so yeah you can see this time this is our total amount and there is no favorites right now card is also empty here and if you want you can just add that item to favorite or you can add any item to favorite you can still add an item to the cart okay so cart is here this is our favorite screen so you can get to see this item and this is our order history so now if you remove the app you will see this again so again open the app and yeah the cart item is still there it is per persisted using async storage this is our liked list and even if you go to that list that is also there and if you unlike that come back this is our new list and then this is our order history list which is this one 
so yes our app is completed if you want to know how to create an apk file so actually i'm going to build an app and i'll be launching it on the google play store so i'll include that uh, tutorial or what else i can do is i can create another tutorial for how to build apk from uh, uh build apk in react native so yes thanks for watching this video so our coffee shop app is completed using react native so thanks for watching this video like and share this video if you want to support my work you can support me on buy me a coffee patreon github sponsor or even youtube thanks uh, if you want to follow me you can follow me on github you can follow me on twitter you can follow me on instagram i am also open to freelance work so if you have any a uh, freelance work you can recommend me or even if you have any client you can also recommend me there and that's it you can also create this app you can star mark my repository or you can fork it in your github that's it so yeah again thanks for watching this video i'm going to make more such of this project so subscribe for that and we will meet in the next video thank you